Day has finally come. Eight teams have distinguished themselves. Eight teams have arrived to the biggest stage in Clash of Clans Esports. Live from Helsinki, Finland, this is your 2023 Clash of Clans World Championship. My name is Eric, and I am excited to be one of your casters for this year's World Finals, but I'd like to welcome to the stage my fellow casters, Judo Sloth, Itsu, and Darian. Thank you, Eric. I'm super excited to be here because we have the eight best teams in the world competing for a lion's share of one million dollar prize pool. And I'm pretty confident that we see some epic clashing over the next three days. Am I right, Judo? Absolutely. During the year, we've seen how these eight teams have been battling to get their golden tickets, which have led them to this world finals. They've already proven to be the best in the world. How are you feeling, Darian? I'm pretty excited. You know, I'm absolutely humbled to share the stage with some of the most iconic titans of Clash of Clans. From the best players in the world to, you know, these awesome casters. And whether you're here in Finland or if you're watching from home, make sure you go to clashevents.supercell.com where you can cast your predictions on who will win each match and get some sweet in-game rewards. Well, the excitement here is through the roof, and I cannot wait to get this started. So let's introduce our teams. Our first four won their golden tickets through the community qualifiers. So let's bring them out. Please give a warm welcome to the winners of the Queso Cup, Navi! <laughs> Next up, we have the winner of the Rush of Clans Gold Edition, Tribe Gaming! together for the winner of the China Golden Ticket, Super BLTX! Winning their ticket from Clash Masters, welcome, Repotted Gaming!
These are the best eight teams in the world. And now, let's make some noise for our amazing teams. This is the 2023 Clash of Clans World Championship. The first team from the qualifiers is none other than Strut. Next, we have Early Attacks. <laughs> Joining us on stage is Clash Champs. teams in the world to show us some epic clashing over this year's Woods Championship. So now the fine time has finally come. Make some noise for these eight teams and let's kick off this year's World Championship. Welcome to the 2023 Clash of Clans World Championship. I'm Carmen Finn, joined with Maxi to bring you some of the most amazing Clash of Clans this year. Maxi, are you ready for this weekend? I definitely am ready, and I hope so are you guys at home and the guys in the arena as well. This is the moment that we've all been waiting for and that these teams have prepared for the whole year. The highlight of the Clash of Clans eSports year is finally here. It is indeed finally here. They have played so much competition to get to this point. Every single Single team, the top eight teams all got golden tickets. Yes, they had to fight through community tournaments. They had to fight through the in-game qualifiers. But Maxi, what is this format going to entail here this weekend? Yeah, the format is pretty easy and straightforward. We have eight teams here, the best in the world, I should say, and then they are competing in 5v5 clan wars. But it's important because other than a, a couple years back, they only have one attack per player. And then it's easy again. The last remaining team will be our world champion 2023. Indeed, and they are fighting for a million dollar prize pool throughout this whole year. The first place will be taking home a cool three hundred thousand wow. dollars second place 150 thousand third 100 thousand but even just making it to this competition forty thousand dollars is what your golden ticket got you here incredible that's absolutely amazing but i think now we should take a look at the teams that are competing and the matchups in the bracket because we have four quarterfinals that we're going to be kicking off this double elimination bracket with. So let's bring the bracket on and see what the first match today is going to be. Absolutely. We started off with the number one seed, the first team to get a golden ticket, which was Navi. Take it on, VN Esports. That'll be the very first match that we will watch here today. Then we have Repata Gaming taking on Strut. Next is Tribe Gaming versus Clash Champs. And finally, Super BLTX taking on Early Attacks. That's four matches, but there's going to be one final match today. Five total, which means that one team today will be going home. That's right, we have one lower bracket match, and that's very unfortunate, but it also means that tomorrow we'll be starting with another elimination match. 
But yeah, that's what uh, th what is going to be today. And um, I I don't know what uh, what could be the, the 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 best thing about this first war. Like we, but we should we should take a little pause before yeah. we go there and see what Darian can tell us over at the World Championship Trophy. Hello, hello, Clash Fest. So. As your community manager, I'm gonna be keeping your eye, my eyes and ears out for your guys' comments on social media. So make sure you keep an eye out for those because we're gonna be doing some really cool Clash merch giveaways. And as I said earlier, make sure you log on to clashevents.supercell.com, use your Supercell ID, and you can cast your predictions on who you think will win the next match and you know take home this really cool trophy that I think might look really good above my fireplace. Do you think anybody would notice that it suddenly disappeared into my suitcase? Time has come. The first match is about to begin. Please give a warm welcome to our first team, Navi. match that we are going to have here today. The defending world champions, Navi, is going to be going first. Cannot wait to see what they're going to be bringing, but take it on VN Esporting. Any team making it here to the competition means that you have a chance. But I mean, Navi, the defending world champs, there's got to be there's so much nerves on the line here. Yeah, I mean, but for both teams, because even though they have become the world champions in last year, everything starts from the bottom. They had to qualify again, they managed to do that, but now they're here and do, they need to win their matches. But let's take a look at their lineup now. And these are some incredible stats we have. We have Sinti, Gaku, Stars, Klaus, and Kazuma. And wow, those stats are amazing, Carl. Indeed they are. They're going to be putting up three stars left and right. It's going to be a 13, 14. Will we see a potential <laughs> perfect board this weekend? Oh. Who knows? Because it's going to be a slugfest. So many triples are going to be coming in. But VNE Sporting are look to keep pace with Demo, iPro, Exo, Danny, Alec, and Hawk. They are going to be looking to try to upset Navi. Because you know at home, many viewers are picking Navi probably to be winning this matchup. But VN Esporting, they have what it takes. They're going to try to show the world what they are capable of. And I cannot wait for it, Maxi. Neither can I. And I mean, the, the stats, they look pretty Ooh. close to each other. But oh, the, the viewers at home apparently have a pretty clear vote. We have 76% yes. voting for Navi. So they seem to be the favorite. But given that they were the world champions in uh, last year, that absolutely makes sense. But I'm pretty sure that VN Esporting wants to show them what they've got. And looking at the head-to-head -head stats between both of those yeah. teams, it's actually very close. Yeah, very close indeed in terms of the stats when they go for it, but are you ready for the very first attack of the 2023 Clash of Clans World Championship? And we are off with the first 
first attack. Exo Danny is starting it with a queen charge twin hogs. With that queen right on the bottom side, going to be able to help take out that defensive king nice and early. The beautiful thing about this is so the royal champion, whenever she moves around, will not get stuck on that king. Usually that could be a huge issue in many attacks. Yes, and I'm also excited about the base designs. First of all, we see a diamond-shaped base, I would say, here, and the town hall is a little bit inside of the base, so sometimes these town halls are protected very well by a lot of traps, but in this case, I think Exodani has done a good, uh, a good bit of, uh, taken out a good bit of buildings already, and there was no Tesla farm so far, so it seems that he's going to get his target, the town hall, out of the way pretty soon. Yeah, with that king now to oh. the left side, pulling out the CC, Rockaloon, Super Minions, gonna look to remove this down, pulling a sinking airline, so he's down one healer in this charge, but typically, Max, we may see a bunch of red air bombs that could be behind the town hall. You may lose all your healers. Definitely, and it seemed like the uh, defender was expecting this entry. Oh, there is the first oh. one, and there are the next red bombs. Is he going to oh, use no. a, a balloon? He doesn't have a balloon oh, no, anymore, no, so no. he knows that the queen will die. So let's see how much he invests. Okay, one more oh, right there. No! Bombs. And the Queen still has her ability, so that will give her some more value. But now it's all about what the Twin Hawks can do. Yeah, as he's going to pop this Warden ability, we're trying to protect the Super Hogs and Regular Hogs moving through as the Queen ability now goes up. Finally now uses that Warden Eternal Tome as the Royal Champion is pushing in. But these defensive Rage Towers are doing so much damage, raging up the Multi, the Scatter, the Expo, including the defensive Queen as he tries to continue this push. But the Eagle Artillery and Molot are still up. Yeah, but he still has a couple of troops there at the top side as well, and the monolith shoots away pretty slowly at single targets. It's very unfortunate that the queen went down because all of those targets down there, the multi inferno and the scatter that's still up, were targets that she was supposed to get. But with the royal champion ability still in hand, Dani still has a chance in this. And however, he finds the skeleton trip, and this is getting closer and closer. But the Tesla is looking to take out this royal champion. The dinghy does that. The giant bomb is there. Takes oh no! Down that royal champion and. Klaus is looking to start off with a defense against Exo Danny as he's trying to get every single bit of percentage because remember, if you don't get that three star, you're looking to get as high up close to 100% as possible. 92, every single building will matter. We've seen matches where it's come down to a single building determining the result. That's right, and we see two important things there. First, Exodani is the highest hit rate attacker from VN Esporting, and Navi, uh, and he, he was going in first, so he was yeah. confident, and I think the plan was really good. As we can see now, there's not a left standing, although the, this was baited and the queen died early off. But we also see that the base building from yeah. Navi and the preparation seems to be on point, because they were expecting exactly that entry. Absolutely. The question's gonna be now if Navi can answer with a three-star of their own. They got the defense, but an interesting stat from last year. Last year to date, Navi was the number two offensive team in terms of attacking, getting three stars. But now, they are not even in the top five, so they've dropped down in the last 60 days. So can Navi turn around here in the World Championship? They started off really hot, but they've started to cool off leading into the World Championship, so everyone's gonna be curious of what Navi's gonna be bringing here in the finals. Well, the World Championship here, the finals is not going <laughs> on. Yeah, yeah, let's see about that. But yeah, you're definitely right there, but I also noticed something else. Navi dropped out of all the community leagues in the, uh, in the uh, last couple of uh, yeah. months, and they also, whenever we saw them on streams, which was uh, more rare than before, they mostly used Electro Dragons. So it seemed to me that they wanted to hide their strats. So let's see what they bring with their first attack. Looks like Klaus is going to be kick. Oh, well, no, Klaus, we saw him out there. Sithi actually is going to be coming in here with what looks to be a skeleton bat donut. We have a bunch of super barbarians here in this attack and to take on Hawk's base as we are seeing it. That's, whoa, 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 whoa. What? Sithi's going for the town hall. He's what? looking to remove the town hall with spells. And the monolith as well, what? and the multi inferno and the expos. No. What's this man no. doing? Last invisibility spell going down, and oh, the town hall is yes. going down! What? The pressure! 
Master of the World Championship, and he does this thing. Oh, this is insane. Amazing. Wait, Max, he's got no more spells. He's out of spells now. Exactly, that's right. That's the downside of it. No what? more spells, but also that much damage out of the way already. And it also means that the back end Rage Tower will only rage up those multi infernos. But let's see what this hero push can do. He's bringing in a uh, Electro Titan with it and a Long Launcher to take care of the Rage Tower and the multi inferno. So getting into that nine, compa nine clock compartment with a nice funnel there. And then he's got Super Bavarian to finish it off. Yeah, the beautiful thing about this base is there's so many open walls. That is when Super Bavarian barbarians are perfect. So if you're looking at bases, you're discerning when should I use super barbarians? When you see bases like this, see all those corners with missing walls? Those are the perfect bases for using this troop because you can move into the compartment and out of the compartment with ease. Yes, but I think after this uh, opener that was so uh, highly uh, co cost, uh, cost so much with spells, I think a perfect warden ability uh, would be necessary. But he didn't catch too much as the Yetis walked to the other side. Let's see if the Yetis and the um, Electro Titan there can take out the scatter shot. So far, yeah, it's looking good. She actually went into the dead zone of the scatter uh, shot. So a uh, good thing taking care of that. But the back end multis with the Rage Tower now look pretty scary to me. Yeah, with this defensive rage spell, gonna rage up the double multis here as Tassel's are on the backside, but he does have nine Super Barbarians. He's gonna use them to pick off the Arch Tower, the camp, the other Arch Tower. Yep. We're starting to yep. see the chairs. Yep. <laughs> They're here in the crowd here. Jared for Cynthia, and it looks like he's gonna be delivering a three-star for Navi with their first attack here in the Clash of Clans World Championship. What a way to start off using the skeleton spells, the bat spells to remove a Town Hall at Town Hall 15. Yes, absolutely. And that was very impressive uh, as he was starting off. And it was an overwhelming three star. Like it yeah. got, didn't even get close towards the end with the Super Barbarians tanking and the heroes still being alive. Great job from Cynthia. And that's, I think, especially powerful for the team's momentum as Cynthia was one of the players that some people had doubts about because yeah. he was the latest addition to Navi, former Queen Walkers, and he also didn't have the best performance so far in the preparation for the World Championship. But now, that's all that matters, you know? Yeah. These attacks here and there with the Empyrean, <laughs> that was important to him and Ooh. his team. Sharon right there getting the three star, the nerves. And the big thing is when you're attacking second and you have a defense to start the match and then you come in with a three star of your own, that is a huge momentum going in. I mean, you could talk about that. You got a competitive experience. Yeah, definitely. I mean, it boosts you so much. And uh, let's see how VN can handle the pressure now as they come in in their next attack. Is looking to get the answer. They have to deliver. Cynthia came in on the offensive side, previous sec. Now he's on the defensive side, trying to look to stop Alec from coming in with a three star. As we are seeing Super Barbarians yet again, because take a look, there's a lot of openings in the walls of this base. So he wants to get this queen to charge her way all the round by herself, as then the warden, the king, can work together and the Super Barbarians can move throughout this base as he pops that warden ability to try to have that blimp make it all the way to this town hall. Yeah, wonder what he has in that blimp because that's going to be important and also he has to multitask at that point. Okay, he just has yetis in there so that's easy to handle, no invisibility spells needed there. But I wonder if he's going to wall break the queen now or maybe in a second, but the value that she's going to get there with the eagle artillery and the scatter shot looks incredible to me. And so far the queen charge is looking good. Uh, I wonder if the heroes on the other side had enough uh, did value because the ground expo is still alive. Yeah, as he does wall break this queen into the eagle. This is going to give the queen access to the other scatter shot with two more super wall breakers to utilize for potentially this queen charge to get so much value. As we are seeing super barbarians coming in from the top side, even over to help grab that ground expo, even dropping a hog into the area as he's saving out of this royal champion that use to move through the base. But you need to use your super barbs to protect the royal champion so she can stay alive with her digging. Yeah, and I, it seems like now he wants to uh, uh, kind of path the way into the bottom side with the uh, Hog Rider and the Super Barbarians Ooh, at the top side, but it's working break. easy. Let's see if the wall breakers work. Ah! And 
Yes, he gets the wall open. That will give him access to the back and rage tower, but not to the multi inferno. But for that, he still has a couple of super barbarians and a strong full life royal champion coming in from nine o'clock. Yeah, that royal champion's making her way from the left side as he made that queen invisible. Can be able to take on the enemy queen. He needs to get there before the uh, his royal champion gets locked down. It's a race against the clock. Come on, queen. Yeah, he pops a billy just so he can take on the enemy queen. And yes, the enemy queen is now distracted on his queen as the royal champion is sneaking in to help grab that multi. But the enemy oh. queen gets distracted to the bottom side, so he sends a couple headhunters in as we're just about 50 seconds left in this attack. Oh, this was quite unfortunate. Oh, the scary oh. spell was lured by the queen ability, so she was not able to finish the enemy queen. Instead, she shot away at the skellies, oh. and now it's a race against the time. I think his own queen will be able to finish the enemy wow. queen, but then his own queen is all he has left, and she has to break out of this compartment first to reach the remainder of what's left of this base. Yeah, he wanted that enemy queen to go down, so that's why he popped that queen ability. Oh, that's a good path. Oh. But he does have to make his way to the sweeper. We do have a builder on the other side. It is repairing this multi target inferno. It's a race against the clock. He's running with the diggy. The walls are open. This is gonna maybe. Oh, come on. How much health does this have? The diggy is helping stun. He's moving in 10 seconds, but he has the oh. time to make his way to the sweeper. No! Uh, he doesn't look happy, and we see the timer <sighs> running out, and it's. Ah, a 98% two star. That was such a great plan. Just a little unlucky there in the end with the timing of yeah. the queen ability. And it's not the three star they needed to show that they are still in this. Yeah, unfortunately fell just a little bit short right there. Now that is two two stars for V and Esporting. If Navi get a three star, that is going to be a huge lead in this match. But unfortunate there for Elek, and he pops that queen ability to try to lure that enemy queen there quicker, but unfortunate there. But remember, if you do lose a match, it is double elimination. So your hopes are not gone, but it's gonna be a very difficult road through the lower bracket, Maxi. Yeah, that's absolutely right. You definitely want to stay in that upper bracket if possible, but we've only seen three attacks so far. So let's see what Navi can bring in their second attempt to three-star VN spaces. to lead it off as the captain of Navi coming in with a bunch oh. of mass inferno dragons <laughs> here. 13 of them with a dragon rider in the mix using a couple rocket loons to help try to go snipe that air defense. And yes, it does indeed go down as the Flame Flinger is slowly going to be used to the top side. You can use a Barbarian up top by that Flame Flinger to test for Teslas in the area so that it doesn't trigger as the Flame Flinger gets closer and it will get taken out. So you have to be very careful with any open spaces because you could have giant bombs, Teslas, traps that are baiting Flame Flingers. But these pros know exactly what to do. That's right, and he has set up a nice funnel so far for the um, Inferno Dragon. So let's see about the top side. Okay, he tries to uh, force the uh, Flame Flinger to the right side so it doesn't, doesn't get into the range of the enemy king, and it seems to be working. And then he wants the Inferno Dragons to hopefully take the king out before it uh, kills the Flame Flinger, I guess. But there come the Inferno Dragons, and now it's all about a perfectly timed warden ability and where the Tornado Trap is hidden. It's all about that Tornado Trap. He's going to move in with these Inferno Dragons and Balloons close to this town hall as he does lure out the clan castle. Archers, super minions, popping that warden ability. There is no blip because he's using a flame flicker, <laughs> so he's gonna rely on his troops to make their way to that town hall, but this flame flicker is taking forever to make its way to that multi-target inferno. That's right, and there were red mines as well, so these uh, Inferno Dragons are damaged already, but they take out the Town Hall. That was important for Gaku, as he still has some heroes to send into the back end, and he's already started with that, and that makes for a little bit of tanking for the Inferno Dragons that are still do wor doing work in the center of the base. Yeah, with those skeleton spells, provide the distraction on the defenses to move his heroes through, to move the Inferno Dragons through. Remember, you don't really expect necessarily the Inferno Dragons to survive the whole attack. You just want them to get to the core, clear the middle, and then have your heroes finish off the rest of the base. Yeah, he also already smiling. I don't know uh, if he feels secure about this attack already, but there are still some raged up defenses that look very scary to me. But the Inferno Dragons are still tanking for the heroes, so the Queen is almost full life with a Unicorn heating her up. And then what I like most about, uh, about this is that he still has a lot of spells left. What I like less 
is that the time is running out slowly but surely. There's a lot of base still to make his way all the way up to the top side and the defensive king, but he's past the defenses. Remember, you don't have to remove the defensive heroes. You just have to take out their platforms. So he doesn't actually have to kill that enemy queen, uh, enemy king up there, but there's a lot of buildings left up as he does pop this RC ability, making his way through the enemy raw champion, through this multi-target inferno, but this king will come back. No, the king does not have the phoenix, so he won't come back alive, but he's only got 10 seconds, and there just oh. looks like there's too many buildings up here for Gaku. Yeah, it was an overwhelming clan. He's got the force, but he doesn't have the time, and oh. you know, you need the time uh, for the three-star, and we know that at Town Hall 15, there are many buildings, so these players have to take that into account when they plan their attacks, yeah. and it feels like he just gave his flame finger a little bit too much time. It was a great attempt, but it opens the door for VN Esporting, but they really need to three-star now. Yes, VN Esporting have a chance now with that defense that they got against Gaku. That's what they, that's all they're hoping for. They just want a chance. Going down by two triples to start a match is devastating on the morale, and it's gonna affect the future attacks from them. So now they know they got a defense, and now they know that they have to turn it around here in this match. Yeah, that's absolutely right. We saw Danny there, uh, as he was the one two-starring the first attack, he felt very happy about this defense for his team. But now it's hammer time. So let's see if VNE Sporting can get their first three-star. You said hammer time. Well, you look at that. That's hogs. They're coming in with their <laughs> hammers. They run right on through. They're going to look to just path their way through. Remember, they're jumping over walls. Who cares about the walls? But there are a lot of open ones here, so you would think maybe Super Barbarians could be used. Well, no. Ibro wants to bring the Queen Charge Win Hogs. He's got a mix of Super Hogs. He's got the regular Hogs. And that Royal Champion's going to move in together. Finally now delaying those healers to path this Queen up top as he uses that King ability to help take out the Scatter and eventually push his way into this ground expo. Okay, he, he uses the invisibility oh. spell, but uh, he doesn't, oh wow, he doesn't make the Builder Hut invisible, so now he reacts quickly with some loons. Now the question is, can they take out the multi-inferno in time? He freezes again, there's a red mine, but I don't know, Carmen, it's closed! Oh, oh he yes. gets it. That was huge, to be able to help take out that multi to protect these healers. If he was not able to do that, the multi-target inferno would have completely annihilated those healers, stopping this queen charge in her tracks. Now that he was able to adapt and save that, taking out the multi, he can continue with his original plan of getting this queen to charge towards that town hall. But, Maxi, this bottom right rage spell tower is slowly coming back, and it's gonna rage up that monolith as he gets in that range. That's right, and there's also a lot of damage on the Queen, so this rage was timed perfectly, so she would still alive through, stay alive through those point defenses and the eagle shots, but still, he wanted her to go a different way, so let's hope, I mean, I think that he can come back from this, because the Queen was supposed to take the Town Hall all the time, and she is getting there, so now it's time for the second phase nice. of the attack for the Twin Hogs. And look at that, he used that blimp to help remove the scatter to try to help set that funnel to push these Hogs into the eagle artillery, but there are two bomb towers, as the Queen is now securing this town hall is continuing the push towards the bottom, moving into that eagle artillery, but that double bomb towers is going to do so much damage to the hog riders if they're even able to stay alive because it's getting so much damage. But this queen is continuing her charge. Max, there might be a bunch of red air bombs as he may lose his healers as he passes this area. Yes, and there is a back-end multi-inferno that he has to get through, but he was able to get some headhunters through the Warden ability that killed this back-end enemy queen. So the Royal Champion, with her ability and the invisibility spell and the free spell, doesn't have to worry about that. The queen, also on full life, which is important for the time. As we only have 36 seconds ago, we see, we hear some cheers from the viewers already here in Helsinki, Finland, and it Ooh. looks good for Ibro. Wow. Can he get the three-star? It's only about the time now. But they are celebrating! Look at that! iPro delivering, getting a three star for VN Esporting. And this could be exactly what they need the confidence to be able to deliver and try to take out a defending world champion, which was Navi. And they are coming in as the number one seed. VN is the lowest seed here in this tournament. It is a double elimination. 
they want to stay in the upper bracket. It's the fastest and quickest way to the grand finals because if you make it to the grand finals, it will be, you will, if you come from the lower bracket, you have to force a bracket reset. And that is so difficult to do. That's absolutely right. And uh, what I what I really like is there. I just saw it at the at the end uh, at the right side of the screen yeah. that the percentage is totally equal. Wow. So right now, if Navi Ooh. were not able to three star, and uh, they would have just a two star, so that would mean same amount of stars. But VN esporting would be in uh, would have a disadvantage in percentage. So that was a very very important three star yes. here. And especially with some things going wrong at the beginning, that is. Yeah, you know, worth even more for the team's morale. Absolutely. They are trying their absolute best to get every single building down in this match. Of course, they're looking for the three stars. But if you fail, you get those 99%. That's still better than getting super low. But are you ready to see what now Navi can do to answer? It's going to be stars, and we know that he is one of the best Lalo players in the world. But there we see 46 Ooh. Super Barbarians, a troop that is considered one of the strongest currently in the game. But he'll start things off with a donut. It seems to be a skelly and bad donut, as he's got the spells for exactly that, and he's now concentrating to do it and get the value that he intended. Stars is looking to help take out the scatter shot, the multi-target inferno. Stars is the in terms of hit rate, the fifth highest hit rate of all these players in this tournament here at 63%. That means 63% of the time he's three-starring the max down all 15 bases. That is insane to think. And he was able to be successful there, taking out the scatter, taking out that multi-target inferno, as he's gonna be coming in with the super barbarians. Already drops an early warden to help move in with the queen, the king, in towards this eagle artillery. And he's even got a log launcher, probably to pair it up from the left side. There it is, to open all the way across to this town hall. Exactly. So the job of the heroes here with the tanking power of the golem and probably an ice golem later on is to take out this town hall. So the log launcher should open the walls, but he also brought a jump spell in case it doesn't go far enough. And now he's funneling the, with the super barbarians on the outside to make sure that his heroes actually take the path into this town hall and so far it looks like it's all working according to plan now i think that in the back end he will send the royal champion in with the uh, ice golem to take out maybe the three o'clock compartment but for now we need the troops to somehow get to the town hall and very unfortunately the king opens the wall to the top side but luckily the troops come back now as he drops the jump spell yeah that jump spell gives him access now to this town hall even though he did open the walls freezing up the town hall but he has to make his way to that monolith he wants this royal champion probably to stay on the outside not towards the town hall and she's going to go to the Archer Tower next. But he doesn't have any spells to distract that Milith, but he's got the Barbarians. He's got the Headhunters to take out that defensive king as the RC continues to move her way around with nine more Super Barbarians to use to take out the buildings, the defenses. And he's got a, over a minute left. It's looking pretty good here for Stars. Yeah, I would say it's looking amazing. As we know, that the Super Barbarians have a lot of hit points, and especially with a lot of them going in front of the heroes, they tank just for so long. They can take out uh, skeletons. We see that Stars is happy. We see that the viewers are happy. And this is the three star. Navi needed to stay ahead. Yeah, Stars delivering a three star here against BN Esporting. That is putting them up to eight. A one star advantage here in this match. Keeping the pressure on VN. They need to start three starring more and more. Pretty much at this rate, they know that they have the three star out. <laughs> That's absolutely right, because the only chance is for them is to uh, provoke a fail from Navi. They need the two-star from Navi, but in order for that to matter, they need to three-star themselves. But still, we have the situation that the percentage is entirely equal if VN keep on three-starring. So they also know that the pressure for Navi is even higher, as they know if they fail and VN three-stars, yeah. they will not just have the equal amount of stars, they will also be back in percent. Yeah, percentage is gonna come down to this match, and I think that it could be all the way up in the high 90s, and if you get one attack in the 80s or lower, you know that you pretty much, that can cost you the match just like that. But of course, they're going for those triples, and we'll have to see what VN Esporting can do to answer what Navi just did. They're only down by one. 
now it's time for the next attack for VN Esporting. None other than Demo coming in. And once again, we see some more Super Barbarians. We also see five invisibility spells and five bat spells. So that's very interesting. So maybe he's coming in with a little donut, but it's also for oh. the Town Hall, Garbage Bin. He's looking to take out the Town Hall and the Clan Castle in the same process. Are you serious? You're looking to do what Cynthia just did? The Clan Castle is down and the Town Wow. Oh. Like he's even shooting away at this ground though. Can he get it? What? It's so low. Come on, one more bet. Oh. No, but it's low and there's no builder to repair it. So he will have an uh, easy time uh, taking it out later on. And now he's using the rocket balloons to follow uh, to a funnel. And now the follow up is basically the same like in Stars' attack. Yeah, he wants that. to get in deep into the base with the log launcher. Yeah, with that log launcher going into the eagle, through to the mile, and then it can line up the shots to hit the multi-target inferno behind it. And you always want to try to pair that one ability with that king ability to protect all the barbarians, and he does! Look at the barbarians getting protected. Perfect ward and eternal tome to get as much value and continuing this push through the core of this base. Great job, and more importantly, everything is staying together. So the funneling troops that he invested were exactly the right amount, but now the king is slowly dying off. Of course, he has the phoenix on him, so he's brought back to life for a second, but he will not be tanking for the queen for long, so he needs to pop the queen ability. Oh, but the scatter shots with their splash damage are almost taking her out, but the royal champion is already in the mix as well. Oh, the queen goes down from the scatter shot. It does get the bounce effect, essentially the queen was behind the Electro Titan, but the Royal Champion is coming to the left. She doesn't have much health. Her ability will be forced pretty soon. Remember that ground expo. That was on the top of <laughs> It is hitting the troops. It's got like no health at the moment. Yeah. Oh, also, the Royal oh, Champion ability shot. doesn't get it. One <laughs> shot. She will get it now. Come on. Yes, one yes. shot. And there we go. Oh, no. <laughs> now it's down. But there's a little bit of back end left. So he should use the troops that he still has to tank for this yep. Royal Champion, I guess. Especially the Archer Tower at the 3 o'clock side. And then he needs to get through these two cannons. And then Demo could have it. This is exactly why you want to put the Diggy on your Royal Champion. You can see him celebrating. Yes. He is loving it. The Diggy gets the stun. <laughs> Keeping that Royal Champion alive, absolutely fantastic. So if there is any hero pet you're gonna wanna be upgrading first, that is 100% <laughs> going to be the Diggy. Such a strong pet and so important in your attacks. Yeah, that was such a close one. With a slither of health, the Royal Champion is able to finish the last building, and the pressure is back on Na'Vi. And also, the last attacker for VN Esporting, Hawk, is yeah. actually the highest hit rate player for them. So Na'Vi Ooh. know that they will most likely finish with a three-star. So maybe the pressure is even rising higher. But then again, these guys, they have a lot of stage experience. But we know one of the most fan favorites of Na'Vi, we haven't seen him. Klaus, That's right. still yet to attack for Navi. Who knows when he's gonna attack? Is he gonna attack next? Is he gonna attack last in their match? It's gonna be a lot of pressure on them as VN Esporting is bringing the three stars. They are answering, but it's time to see now what Navi can do. Yet, first we will see Kazuma, and he is known for his extreme queen charges. And when we look at the trooper, we see five healers already. So it's going to be another queen charge from Kazuma, but he also has a red spell in there. He does that recall spell, but I know I don't want to bring this up, but I just have to. <laughs> Kazuma has actually the second most amount of. I hate to say it, one stars out of all these players in the competition. Out of 250 attacks, he's got nine one stars. I know that's not bad, right? But you never know what could happen. As long, oh, he does pull that queen back nice and early. Oh. But he did take out the enemy queen so that the flame flinger can now go into the, grab the scatter shot and that brain warden altar. 
Yeah, that is very interesting. He just did, he basically invested the recall spell to make sure that his uh, Flame Flicker could get the value in this corner. And that is something that we have seen once or twice before, but not that often. So it seems like it could be something that Navi has been practicing. I mean, especially because we are all about those secret strategies that we want to see from the, from the teams and also the secret base designs. And looking at the base design, this is very interesting with this big open eagle corner and then we have the rest kind of as a diamond shaped base. Yeah, doing a queen charge, recall, into. Oh, that is just <laughs> crazy. That is something you don't normally see often, but this queen has had to get through these super minions. Does pick off that headhunter, but unfortunately, the royal champion does pull ground skeleton slowing her down, so he uses an invis to allow this royal champion to continue her push towards that multi target inferno. Yeah, and the Royal Champion's job was also to take out this ground expo that otherwise oh. could have posed a threat to the Flame Flinger. Unfortunately, the Royal Champion found a lot of skelly uh, traps there, so uh, uh, Kazuma is actually investing another free spell there, but he's not going to be able to take out the multi Inferno with no, the Royal no. Champion. He's not. That multi does stay up and that queen can't reach it. So he has to come back all the way around as the King of Pilly went off into the defensive Royal Champion. And now here comes the Lalo in towards the Town Hall. Remember, he doesn't have a blip because he used the Flame Flinger. So he's going to have to use the Ward of Eternal Tome to help take down this Town Hall. And also he invested a couple of free spells on the Royal Champion. And oh. I, don't, I don't know if he has found the Tornado Trap yet. Maybe it's there? No, it's okay. not? Okay, he's got the Town Hall. That's the most important thing at this point. He does indeed, but the Queen unfortunately is beating a wall right now, and she's gonna have to make her way to the mile. The Warden does go down, and he doesn't have too many balloons left. Only four with a Freeze and an Invis left. He does now pop this Queen ability here, but a two-star for Navi would tie this match up here, Maxi. Yeah, but I would say, I say it's a time fail if it's a fail. It's probably a time fail, because something would have to go all the way to yep. this multi inferno, but he still has an invis as well. He could wall break there even, which he's doing Does. now. Um, yeah, the question is, will anything go back there in time? He needs his queen probably to wrap around and go for the She does! She does go back wow. around! Wow! As we do the it. to the left. Hang on, the Yeti takes that out! The queen's working on the multi, and he's going for the storage! And what? On the buzzer, and we can see the excitement all across this place here in the viewers and in the team, of course, as well. Because we know we have said how important this is to stay in the lead for Navi. And wow, that was a nail biter for sure. That was insane. He had the perfect clean up in the perfect spots to be able to get it at the absolute last second. We're not even the last second, last millisecond, <laughs> taking down every single build. Building. So impressive. And I don't know if he thought that was gonna three stars. There's a very last moment where the three stars came in and keeping a strong lead here for Navi. Going into the final set of attacks in this first match. Let's see what Via and Esporting can do. attack and they need to three star and it is none other than hawk i've said it before he's got the highest hit rate in the team with a whopping 59 percent and he's coming in with a queen charge as well and we'll be finishing it off with be, be careful not a lalo but a low there are just <laughs> balloons there so let's see how he's going to try to pull that off i mean max who needs a lava hound right no one needs a lava hound not in this hit here as hawk is going in with this queen charging her way to the right side as the king has been deployed as well to help push this queen in towards well to the left, kind of may snake her way into that round expo as he drops a lightning to help take out the multi target inferno. The queen will easily be able to grab the ground expo. She is taking quite a bit of damage. There is a defensive rage tower there, so as long as the expo still get raged up, he can continue this queen charge without needing another rage. That's right. Now he can charge around this oh. entire compartment, but especially those eagle shots raining away at the queen are a little bit of a problem with the rage up expo in combination. But he's able to drop the spells exactly 
in the right time. And now we see what the Super Barbarians were for. He wanted to funnel the buildings at the 3 o'clock side to keep this Queen inside. And notice that he's also brought two more uh, Super Wall Breakers. So he wants to open the Multi-Inferno compartment and take that out of the way with his Queen. Uh, if you take a look at the percentage, it's exactly the same. Right? <laughs> yeah. This is such a close force. This is a difference of a one star. So a three star here for VN would put him up to a 98%. That is insane, which means that it's going to come down to what Klaus does wow. in the final attack, if this does indeed three star, okay. as that warden ability <laughs> protects the blimp, making it all the way to the town hall. But this queen has a path directly for this multi-target inferno as our ability does now go off. And he makes it to the town hall with the blimp. That was very important. And there are super goblins, apparently, Ooh. in it. It, and they were able to take it out. Now he needs to freeze the monolith, which he does in time, so the Royal Champion can take it off, uh, take it out. No more spells, that is important, and a back and scatter shot. He's got the power, I think. Oh, oh. <laughs> He's got an air defense as well, Royal yep, Champion yep. in the town all poison. But that's perfect. He's wow. freezing it in the balloons. Because Look at the that. scatter shot does splash damage and he can tank for it this way. And they are celebrating. What an attack to Woo. finish it off. VNE Sporty putting up a 13 star performance here in the very first match. And Navi just needs a two star to get the 13. But if they do not get a 100%, they will be down a percent. So I think Klaus will basically have to win on stars at this point. That's absolutely right. Klaus needs to three star. Any two star, it's even if it's a 99% two star, will mean Whoa. Navi has to go to the lower bracket. And what? we said it before, they're our defending world champions. Wow. So the pressure is on for sure. It's coming down to the final attack here in this match as we're taking a look at Hawks closing attack here with the balloons pathing through RC Billy going off and having those back end balloons to help get that done. And VN can't do anything at this point. They are just sitting back and seeing what their bases now can do. One final base in this match, and it's got to be attacked by Klaus. Klaus must triple this attack to win the war. Let's go. The man, the myth, the legend, Klaus, is coming in with Inferno Baby <laughs> Dragons. Usually we see some very sophisticated plans from Klaus most of the time, but it seems like uh, they have been practicing the Inferno Baby Dragons a lot. So now, let's see where he come in, comes in. With 14 of them, he's even got a clone spell. Typically, you see a clone used with super minions or super archers here. As the blimp lands, it makes it, pulls a red air buff. There's the clone, there's a range in Viz to keep them going. Pulls another red air buff, but he's okay. Look at the grab a multi, grabbing a mile, grabbing a town hall, and even a wizard tower at the end. Taking out a defensive king, which could really help a royal champion. Yeah, that was great because that was expected from the base builder, as we could see with the Seeking Air Mines at the start and the Red Mines coming in. But Klaus chose an angle that allowed him to still get it through. He got the value, and that's the most important thing about these attacks. Now, the push with the Inferno Baby Dragons will be followed by the heroes coming in from the 6 o'clock side. That's why Klaus is already funneling with the Yeti. Maybe he wanted to take off the air defense, which he doesn't. But so many Inferno Dragons still alive that they will be able to overwhelm it. But the heroes oh. have to finish the base. They have to do. There's two minutes left in this attack. He took out the town hall. There's no clan castle. The Inferno Dragons are flying around towards the eagle as the king is going to make its way towards the right side, protecting this queen with a wall break. Coming in to open up this compartment to help his heroes continue his way around with a poison spell being invested on the defensive queen to slow her down. And possible skelly traps as well. And this wall break was so important oh. so the queen wouldn't get stuck in this six o'clock compartment. And so far, this is looking amazing. Still has the royal champion to deploy as well and a free spell but now the rage spell goes off that's the last chance for the defender the raged up defenses around there if they he's kill off enough troop he is smiling that's right <laughs> oh he's got the road champion moving through he's got a freeze left to use as he continues his way around the queen does lock onto a wall so that's gonna slow her down you do want to see that queen get outside the base but unfortunately she now retargets to the best wall to go to the top side of this base as the rc ability does go off there's only some tests a couple point defenses on top side as he continues to push his way through with a minute left in this attack. 
Yeah, it's looking good, but they're usually scared. He traps around the Tesla oh. and we see three of them popping already. But I think he's overwhelming this with the full life queen. And she doesn't even have to break a wall because all the walls are open and with 50 seconds, time will not be the problem here. So either the heroes finish this base or, yeah, the time wow. is off. But we see it already. And now the smile Look is getting that. bigger and bigger as wow. he knows. He's done it. Navi win their first match. And VN go to the lower brackets. Klaus delivers, getting the three star when they needed it most. With putting Navi to 14 stars, and Navi will be advancing in the upper bracket. But VN Esporting will have another chance in the lower bracket. But what a first match in the 2023 Clash of Clans World Championship. <laughs> Incredible stuff we have here, Max. That's exactly why we've waited for this the entire year. Those matchup matches, and especially with Navi yeah. being the favorite here, and we, we saw the prediction beforehand, but they just yeah, the, the VN just performed and was so, so close until the very last attack. So I would say now, let's hear it from the winners. Let's see what they have to say after this victory. Well, first of all, congratulations, Navi. You guys have won the very first match of the 2023 World Championships. How does it feel to take that first victory? Uh, <laughs> So every single year, the first war is the most important for us. So we are super, super happy that we actually managed to win this one. And Kazuma almost timed out on the last attack. Were you getting a little nervous there, or a little, little scared that you might not make it? あの、カズマさんはギリギリあのま前回できましたけれどもあの時間が足りるかどうかちょっと緊張したんでしょうか。so we were kind of nervous, like it was like so super close, we didn't know if it's gonna go or not, but we thought, okay, he's gonna make it and uh, all went fine. And is there anything you'd like to say to your fans, that everybody who's watching live or to the audience here? ファンの皆さん、こっちに座ってる、あの、見てる方と、あの、配信を見てる方のために一言挨拶お願いします。uh, we think we are here where we are, thanks to our fans cheering us on. So thank you, thank you all for the uh, ongoing support. Congratulations to Navi! What an amazing first match we had here. But let's go and welcome Itsu here to the desk. Man, I cannot believe what a first match. Itsu, what was your thoughts? Uh, kind of speechless. I mean, that was just crazy, especially after last year. We kind of saw maybe a curse developing with like the world champion going down to the lower bracket early on. Luckily, this happened not this year. So, well, luckily there's no curse, I guess. It doesn't seem that way for sure, but you never know. I mean, this was the first match of many more to come, but it was an incredible one, a nail-biter for sure. But both of the teams uh, performing to the best of their ability. And I was especially very impressed with how VN did, yeah. because they kept it close while no one was believing that. Yeah, they kept it super close. They've had back and forth matches. VN has won multiple times against Navi in other community tournaments before. So they did an amazing performance here, getting 13 stars. Now we had to put up 14 stars to win this match. Yeah, I mean, it was a crazy back and forth. I was really surprised seeing from both teams how many like openings with skeleton spells, with bad spells we have seen. And I mean, those pros, even though we have seen in the like the player camps, their hands were shaking, but still they were so precise with those spells. It's, it was just blowing me away. <laughs> yeah, so uh, yeah, same for me. And especially coming in with some uh, more secret strategies. Like, it's, it was funny that both of these teams came up with the strategy to skelly donut the town hall, or like bad yeah. donut the town hall. That was incredible there. Yeah. And uh, it, I always love to see this new stuff. But also, the two Inferno Baby Dragon attacks from Navi were surprising me a lot. But there we have it, the final result of the match. Um, yeah, just one star difference between the That's teams. It. But in the end, that decided the war. Well, look at 
the percentage. V and E Sporting still won on the percentage. 98% to think that it came that close. And Navi had a win by a star. And of course, none other than Klaus delivering <laughs> the three star to help advance Navi. But let's go ahead and now break down one of the attacks from that match. Take it away, Itsu. Well, I feel like since we have seen so many of those, we should for sure take a look at one of the attacks. And we're going to take a look at the attack of stars. So we have overall the um, skelly and bad donut at the beginning, which is taking down a really important area of the base. So for this, it was the area around the Rage Tower, making sure taking down a scatter shot, for example, the Expo and so on early on. That was the exact same idea in other attacks with taking on the Town Hall key defenses. And what this does as well, it creates pathing because if you take a look at that, this entire section is gone, which creates the perfect pathing for his troops to walk in here with taking down the chop side and everything is getting funneled into the middle, pushed into the middle with the Town Hall then being the next step. Now you might wonder, where is the jump spell coming from and why would you do that when using a log launcher? Log launchers are doing two things. First off, dealing damage. That is always really underestimated how much damage those log launchers do to walls, to buildings, to the defensive client castle. A lot of things are on the menu for those, uh, for those siege machines. But then the jump, just to make sure that he can really reach those top defenses. And then the town hall is next because the way how he placed that jump made sure that only the town hall was the next target with then cleaning things up around though. That was a beautiful attack, I would say. That was an impressive one. And in the end, that got them the win, or at least yeah. one of the three stars they've got. Yeah, it was incredible. An amazing performance from both teams. They delivered. So it is now time to learn about the next matchup we have here in the Clash of Clans World Championship. Let's learn it from Eric. The next two teams are making back-to-back -back appearances in our World Championship. The winners of Clash Masters is our first team. Welcome to stage, Repotted Gaming. Clash of Clans community. They are unstoppable. They are strut. This is going to be it soon. We can give a little bit of an introduction to the teams, have a look at their stats, maybe some of our predictions. What's your initial thoughts moving into this one? I mean, it's going to be a crazy one. Two teams, as Eric said, coming back to the World Championship stage and really showcasing that they are super consistent because it's not easy to make sure that they have this re those reappearances at the World Championship stage. And this is going to be crazy with having reported and their stats on the screen first. Yes, you can see all into the 90% destruction. Tim Tastic, I think he was one of the most impressive players here last year, actually. So like you said, they've got a lot of experience on the big stage, which can really make the difference when it comes down to those tiny little differences. Yeah, and they're coming in with a newcomer with a temper being incredible as well. But let's take a look at the Strat lineup because, oh, Juno, they are looking scary this year. I mean, 
as their team captain with an incredible hit rate. But as well, I feel like we should not underestimate that. He has the experience for this team and really is able to get them the team, ex like the stage experience. I think he is one of the best attackers. If something is going wrong, being able to analyze what is left in the base in order to take it down. Interestingly though, I think this is one of the hardest matches of today in order to predict. I'm interested to hear what your thoughts were. I feel like both of those teams are incredible, especially on defense. Reported has been the best team on defense from all of those eight teams which are at this stage. But I feel like let's take a look if those defenses can hold because we're going straight into the match. Let's take a look. of Strut using the Super Dragons. We've already seen a little bit of variety in the first wall. This is something we haven't seen yet. Yeah, I feel like it's really, as well, the question of bases, because we have so far seen a lot of diamond bases during the first match. But this match is already kicking things off with, well, a complete different style, the ring bases, which are right now a really, really good base style because they are so good with those range towers. So the question is, can those super dragons overwhelm the core and take down the town hall? I feel they can always trip you up, the ring style bases, but he's held the battle blimp until he's ready to use that warden ability so he can capture all of the super dragons moving through this raged area and the battle blimp. Huge damage coming in, but he's got the protection. He got the protection indeed, and there is no trade trap, but he has decided to go with the Yetis, which is throwing out the clan castle, but they just go over and go for the queen, which is not the biggest threat, but the core, well, there's still quite a few defenses left standing, and the majority of Super Dragons went to the far right side. Not ideal. He definitely wanted those two grounded expos and the clan castle with the Super Dragons. So with them all peeling off to the side, decides to turn one of them invisible to capture that expo, maybe give him a glimmer of hope. Is it going to get it down? Ooh. Oh! Oh, it's just... I thought it was going to retarget. Wow, the Bitter Huts tried their best to keep it alive, but the good news for him right now is he has the Barbarian King, he has the Royal Champ still for the back, and with all of those compartments open, they can enter wherever they want. It's not all about this back end. The King is there, we have the defending monolith, and the Rage Tower is slowly reloading, Judah. It is. Just used that skeleton spell, obviously, because of the monolith. feel like he's going to have to use the Rage Tower right in the middle, just behind the monolith once he takes that down. He's still got the hero abilities. This is just such a huge damage area. We know how devastating the Rage Towers can be. It pops. The Expos are firing at the heroes. Is he going to get this? The Royal Gem coming in, making sure that the first Inferno Tower is going down. The Rage area is still there. Are there any skeleton traps? And the defending Queen is up there as well. Is that too much damage? But this looks good with the Queen ability left and the Rage spell left. This shall be the first three star of our second match of this year's World Championship using the Rage spell just for fun at the end. The Archer Queen ability will be able to get these final few buildings and opening three-star for Strut, which means the pressure is on Reporter Gaming from the start. That's right, and we have talked about how the teams have performed over the last couple of months, over this entire year, because we have all of those stats from the Competitive Clash Network, making sure those teams are, well, showcased in those numbers. And the defensive power of Reported is, as we said, one of the best. But their offense is not on the same level just stats-wise as Strat. So the question now is with Strat starting off that strong, can they answer and can they get their first three star with their first attack, which would be massive for them? It certainly would be. And I feel at this point, you really have to respond. The war can easily slip away from you very early on if you're not able to start putting those stars on the board. But it is going to be interesting to see whether they continue with those same styles of bases. Let's take a look. So it looks like that 
next player is getting ready. We have Darkstar on defense. It seems to be as well one of those core town hall bases. I wouldn't call this really a ring base, but mm -hmm. they're using the same method of trying to make sure that the range towers are covering as many defenses as possible. But this makes sure that, well, a lot of defenses are close together and the lightning spells coming in early on to give this Titan attack a really good chance. All about setting up the funnel for the Titans. I always like to see when you can use one of the heroes to tank, whether it's a Mortar or an Expo, since that can actually fire at the Flame Flinger. It's one of the few defenses it can't outrange. So really nice job down to the bottom of the base there. And you can see, just trying to set up the funnel either side whilst he's got the time to do so, because once the Titans come in, he has to be focused on everything going on with his spells. That's right, and he's not waiting any longer. He is ready, the warden has to follow, and that's exactly what he does. I'm a little bit scared of that bitter hunt. That could really mess up the pathing right there, but there is a skeleton trap to lure that queen into the right direction as well. Is she going there? Is she coming back? I'm scared. Oh no, this is not looking good for the funnel for reported gaming. A couple of troops are going inside, but well, at least the healers are following. The healers did follow. I, weren't, I wasn't sure where they were going to go there, but it is unfortunate that the Archer Queen is stuck, stuck down at the bottom. The Electro Titans can get pretty good value in the center here, and maybe it'll work out for him if he can power through this Town Hall, but without the Queen, it's a little bit tricky. You don't have that backup plan. It does fall, though, and the Royal Champion is reinforcing at the top side of the base. I mean, this, at least this means that the Queen is not caught inside that Poison Tower, like inside that Poison of the the Town Hall with the Royal Champ coming in from the top set, a great skeleton spell to distract that monolith. But we have the back end, the Queen is kept alive with her ability, and I think as long as this is Tesla form with the Expos getting overpowered, this looks pretty good. <laughs> <laughs> Well, let's see what he has inside the Flame Flinger here. The, the Archer Queen gets the air defense. Yeah, I was figuring it might be Rocket Balloon, so that's ideal to ping forward, get one of those seeking air mines out of the way. Yet he's stuck on the outside of the base. Is he going to have enough to follow through with this? With only 50 seconds, Itsu, it could even come down to time on this one, I think. Oh, no, I can for sure tell that the players on boys are calling right now. If that Mojang Flame Tower is in range for minions to place onto that clan castle to take that out, already but to take a look at that there is no wall opening around the top side the queen cannot leave that power again which means with 27 seconds left this is not looking good for reported it's not it is going to be into the 90s but it's not the three star that strut had put up interestingly in the community tournaments these teams have played 13 times with Repotted Gaming winning eight of those matches. So Repotted having the better success, but there's nothing like the world final stage. It's a totally different ball game, and after one attack each, it is Strut in the lead. That's right, Strut in the lead, and they're up next, so they could even push this lead even further, put more pressure on Repotted. And especially at this World Championship stage, we have heard from the teams in most of the cases, being Team B, which means attacking second, is a pretty good spot to be in. But for those top teams with those incredible hit rates, Team A is sometimes better because you can put up the pressure, especially on the stage, if you're falling behind and putting the pressure on the other team. It is not easy to really keep that mental going. And we see already there with the reaction, they were pretty confident with the plan, it feels like, and it did not work out for them. So I am worried what is about to come, but Strut is next. So they can look at that. to attack with the twin hog riders the queen charge first what's your initial thoughts looking at this base it's starting with the flame flinger on the left i mean it's another ring base another rage tower stack in the middle and typically they were designed to counter queen charges so i'm really looking forward to see how one of the best queen charge attacker in the entire world is going to handle this as he's charging him from this bottom side right into that eagle artillery there's going to be double like double expos ranged up double scatters ranged up the flinger is going to have great value but it's not taking on any of the key defenses 
exactly. I always find with these bases, it gets a bit more hectic in the middle. You have to react a lot more because you can't always plan what's going to happen when there's so many defenses there. So far, so good for Rigatores. Popping that King ability to clear out the defenses on the left-hand side, just get that Clan Castle pull, and they will momentarily then be moving down to the Archer Queen, where the Rage Tower can hopefully then start expiring. Yeah, that's right. Handling the Clan Castle right now as the Rage Tower on defense was triggered by the King. And as you correctly said, it's now expiring. But take a look at that. Ooh. This damage is just crazy. The Flinger already opened, so it got like four defenses, I think, and mainly Archer Towers or Wizard Towers, which is not the worst, but not what you're looking for. And now he has to make sure that Town Hall is still up there. And this is the important thing and the, the tricky thing about those ring bases. If things are going wrong, they are going really wrong. He managed to get a couple of the Seeking Air Mines, but you can see healers inside the radius of the Multi Inferno raging again. He has no rage spells left, Itsu, just a single freeze, which he decides to use now, and now reinforcing with the Hog Riders to the center as well. Oh, he's really trying to get that tunnel, but if there is the tornado trap and keeping those hogs inside the tunnel poison, this would be really bad news. The scanner fires once. The right tower is not going off, but there's another bomb tower. Early warden ability. This could be a really low percentage if those hogs are not avoiding the tunnel. The tunnel's going down, which is massive for him. Where are the hogs going? Some of them went inside, some of them did dodge it, but they went instantly into a giant bomb. Huge damage with two raged up multi-target Infernos trying to reinforce with the regular Hog Riders. But look at all of the Tesla by the Builder Huts as well. There is just so much going on on General X's base. Riga Torres is not going to be able to pull through here. That's right, but he is getting quite a few percentages considering how the Queen Charge has went. So really, really solid. But still, the multi Inferno Tower and the other defense are left standing. But in 18 seconds, and with the Warden alive, he's going to push up those percentage, but they're not going to be equal to what Reporter just had. So now it's up to them catching up, getting the three star, and then like everything is returned. I mean, <laughs> the pressure is then on, on Strut. If the percentage lead might be on reported, uh, might be on Strut, but first, reported has to do their attack. Absolutely. I feel like down to the six o'clock area, maybe he could have funneled that just a little bit more so the Archer Queen went straight in towards the multi in the expo because I think the second rage spell he used, maybe he would have been able to delay that had the six o'clock area have been cleared out. But I guess we'll never know. So it is a lead still, but anything can happen after this next attack. That's right. The next attack is happening really soon with well, the answer, maybe no. We will really have to make sure that we're keeping a close eye on this next attacker. Let's see who is it going to be for reported. All of those players are really experienced and returning to the big stage knowing how to perform, mm. how to do their attacks. I mean, despite having a lower percentage, Strut does already have the three star. So let's see if reported can get one of their own. It is in, and there we go. It feels like the first match, both teams like handshaked on using diamond bases. <laughs> Those two teams <laughs> just agreed on using only ring bases, or like they just both predicted that the other team would not be that good with those ring bases. Either way, it's quite interesting. Uh, we see another Titan Smash from Reported. They feel like this has to be the answer to those ring bases. It has not worked in the first deck. It was close. We have to give them that. But in the end, it didn't work out. The Lightning's already... And I feel like the idea of this attack is to get your Titans into the first Rage Tower, take down the back end Rage Tower, and make sure that you well, get the channel, then have the Royal Champ circle around the tubes. That obviously does look like the plan. I guess the advantage of the Electro Titan is any Clan Castle troops can be vaporized alongside skeleton traps. But I remember you saying that for ring bases, Super Bowlers are often a good choice, especially when you're driving into the town hall. So I wonder whether you feel this base lends itself more to the Electro Titans. I mean, I'm a huge uh, Super Bowler enjoyer, so I just think they work on any core base. 
I typically think with Lightning's not that great because the Rages are just working so, so well with them. But we have the Titans and they were great without Rages and that's why you bring those Lightnings with Reported. Now pushing further into the base, the King is leading the charge and Judo, this time the Queen is in that middle. <laughs> Good job there. He did freeze the Rage Tower early to stop it activating so that he could time the Warden ability now with that Rage Tower exporter and mitigate damage. Town Hall should be falling momentarily and a lot of the troops can hopefully then just sideswipe and keep out of the way or as I say that, everything getting thrown in. The multi-target Inferno is there. Finally, it goes down, but everything other than the Queen is inside that poison. Oh no, the King is now up there, but at least the King is now tanking some of the air traps. The Royal Gem is getting sent in there. And the back end monolith, that is going to be a really big, painful defense to have on that back end. Yet again, they have another Rage, so maybe can maybe the Rage can somehow carry this. The question is, where is he going to use it? He's going to use it for the Royal Gem. He has to get that monolith. The Queen, with her ability and the Unicorn, they should stay alive for quite some time. Maybe he can get the healers to go across to that Royal Champion as well. But to be honest, there's not a lot left here. Oh. And he should be able to get this. Skeleton Trap pops, but once that Monolith is down, there is nothing else to stop him with the Queen ability. General X is going to answer here for Reported Gaming. And they will take the lead due to the lower percentage attack from Rigatores. Yeah, I have to say that the approaches of Reported to those ring bases looked really, really promising. And even the first attack, there were only a couple of things going wrong. Imagine if that queen would have went into the core, as on this attack, this entire attack could have looked different. So I like that Reported have apparently a counter to those ring bases, where it looked like more from, from Strut. They were kind of like playing the strategies, which they are really, really good at, and kind of like forcing those um, those strategies a little bit, because as I said, Queen Charge Twin Hogs is just are so, so hard versus those double rage tower bases, and especially with the ring bases, where everything is just happening at the same time. Yeah, and as you correctly said, Reported Gaming do have one of the strongest defensive uh, side of things on their play, so maybe we can see a lot more variety in bases feeding into what they're expecting Strut to go with, but at the moment, with two bases like that, we'll have to see. Let's see what Strut can do next. is a huge attack for Darkstar, falling behind on percentage, only two attacks in, so they know they've still got plenty of time to catch up, they just need to keep calm, still anybody's game at this point. Do have the blimp flying into the center, the Super Barbarians to follow up, but it is all about this opener. It's all about the opener, but I think it's going to be Super Minions, that's right, there goes the clones. Few red mines, but not enough to take all of them out. And remember, super archers are strong, but with a lot of traps, they can be countered quite well. But super minions, it's way harder to trap them. And so far, I mean, take a look. I wow. Think, I think at this point we have to count which defense he has not taken care of. I mean, that is just crazy. By now, we can see two explos left. We can see no scatters, no monolith. I mean, one of the tower is gone as well. <laughs> that was quite a bit of value. I'm sure he's not devastated if that Rage Tower reactivates with nothing around it. But we do have the heroes moving into the left side now. It's all about just creating the funnel at this point, keeping the heroes moving through into the core of the base so they can snipe off those defenses as they go. And he's got 10 Hog Riders in order to help with that, presumably to the cannons up there across the northeast side. There's live, but there goes the defensive. Great spell. The good news for him is with the Super Minion Blimp, he still has quite a few of the spells left. The King is reinforcing the middle troops, the Royal Gem on the outside. And it seems like there's not much left of the space at this point, with still a Super Barbarian swarming the back end, and still another skeleton spell left to deploy. We talked about the experience of a lot of these players when the pressure is on, really needing a three star, ripping apart the base. One minute and 20 left with multiple hero abilities, Hog Riders jumping into those final few defenses. I'm surprised we haven't seen celebrations yet because this is all but guaranteed at this point. There we go, Darkstar getting the three star and making sure Strut are right there, keeping the pressure on Reported. They want this opening round victory. They do not want to go to that lower bracket. Fantastic attack.
And what a crazy attack that was. Really, really impressive. And yeah, showing kind of the mind games, like blimping mm -hmm. where the bomb tower was, but with the super minions and not the super archers. So really nicely done. And with that, well, they have gotten another three star. Well, now it's back to Harry Potter then. But I think we should take a second look at that last attack where things went really downhill for that base because <laughs> I think that base is going to go right from the account. Yeah, let's They're just, not let's just arrange that They're one. not going to use it again. I mean, that base got wrecked. Let's go! Bye, Dark! Good job. <laughs> Always oh, nice to hear the... Show me the army. Yeah, yeah. I already shared it in the chat. <laughs> It was high school, right? I thought after the celebrations they were done there, but asked uh, <laughs> Jem, your army. <laughs> Always great to hear the team comms as well. One thing I did really like, actually, at the start of that, he used the clones side by side to make sure he just had a bit of a better spread on the super minions. And you saw how effective that was for ripping, opening, uh, ripping open the core of the base. So if you are doing that strategy at home, just remember to alternate those clone spells a little bit so you get a little bit of a better spread on the minions. Yeah, I think what's really interesting with the voice comms right there, in the end, we have said, us is the most experienced player there, and right as the attack finished, he asked, okay, what was the clan castle? In the end, they even triggered a couple of spring traps and giant bombs on the outside versus flingers, which is then like telling you already, okay, this is what reported has traps. So those are the important things, like keep being concentrated. I think we should be concentrated as well because we're going right into the next attack. like every attack we say the pressure is on because it really is that intense here the world finals and you always want to get a victory in the opening match obviously starting with the flame flinger to the right side just to get the attack started once he knows the flinger is safe and the warden is doing its thing up to the north of the base he can then use the lightning he's not wasting any time just to make sure that if it does come down to the wire as we have already seen today he's been as time efficient as possible that's right really trying to make sure everything is in his favor when it comes out to time when it comes out to the well pathing of his troops now the question is which we all have to ask is he going to be able to funnel his queen into the base <laughs> Well, we will find out in the next 2 minutes and 15 seconds, it's soon, or I guess sooner than that, as we start with the Ice Golems just to tank out in front. A couple of balloons flying into this as well, just to make sure you're testing for full balloons inside the base. Always nice to capture those inside the modern ability so they can really move into the center. The healers being so pivotal, but outfly some rocket balloons from the Clan Castle alongside two Ice Golems to then slow him down. Yeah, but take a look at that flinger taking down already another key defense on that outside. We have another warning ability happening as all of the troops are getting frozen up. The king in the middle is getting put into his phoenix egg. And the queen looks like, so far at least, is avoiding the town of poison yet again, which is perfect for him. Yeah, really nice job just being able to assure that even once the Electro Titans get the Town Hall, they can go down. They've done their job. He's then relying on the Queen, the Royal Champion, with the Rocket Balloons taking down that Monolith. He can be very flexible now with his two free spells that he's got left over. That's right, and Reported really can prepared with those ring bases. They have their counter prepared, and it looks like it's all about Titans. It's all about those Lightning spells, taking down one Rage Tower, one remaining Rage Tower is not as threatening anymore, Car uh, dude. <laughs> well, I'm certainly going to be taking notes because I'll be honest, I do not like attacking these bases. <laughs> Whenever I see these in warm, next, 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 please find a base that doesn't look like this. But it is going to be a returning three star. We've talked about how close these teams are, constantly throwing three stars back to back. Mech not quite celebrating yet, making sure he is dialed in to the very last second and even swagging that final freeze, not quite. Making sure the Barbarian King doesn't get any shots off. Always love to see that 100% now going through. Fantastic job. I mean, time might matter in the end. This is always the important thing. Stars is the most important thing, then it's percentage, then time is the tiebreaker. So 
making sure that your attack is as quick as possible is just playing it safe. And that's exactly what all of those teams are doing with taking a look again at the perfect timing of that warn ability, catching the king before he goes into the Phoenix egg with like literally zero hit points. And then the queen avoiding that town of poison. The celebration is there. The players still concentrated, <laughs> but they got the job done. Back to Sprunt and the pressure is on. Indeed, what type of, I feel like the bases are all over the place as to what we're gonna expect. So let's take a look. Queen Charge, Twin Hogs, and the Recall spell. I always love seeing some Recall attacks. Yeah, and it feels like that Reported really have like said, okay, would Strat will use their comfort strategies in this tournament, which are quite some of those players, Queen Charges, and that's why they bring those Rage Tower bases. They know that Philip, for example, is really good to attack those, but then if you put up five ring bases, at least one of them have to be attacked, has to be attacked by someone who doesn't like to go up against them with the strategy which they typically like to go. And this so far is looking solid, the recall. Mickey just threw the queen is going the right direction, which is quite interesting. But, well, that's already one big spell down. The queen has uh, quite a few rages left to go with, but that town hall is really far away. <laughs> it certainly is. Setting up the funnel over at the east side of the base. Couple of those loons in order to test with the battle blimp now aiming to dive into this area. Maybe that can just wipe out the defenses to the left of the town hall so that when he swipes through, he's not gonna get distracted. They can beeline it to the town hall itself. That's right, but it was a heavy investment. I think he has what? not gotten that much with the Yeti Mice because of the Raid Scatter. Remember, the Raid Scatter one-shots Yeti Mice. So if the timing is unlucky, then you're not looking that good. And that is exactly what's happening to Mask right now. I mean, Queen charging into those bases just feels so, so painful. And I think the Tower is still far away. The Raid Tower reloading, but that's two Expos on his way. The Scatter and the Monolith is then really closely after that. He's handling his nerves very well. I just noticed as when the raged expos were on the queen, how quick her health went down. But he's managed to preserve that ability for when he's in the center. And the king perfectly funnels that right side so the queen can walk around the wall now. My main concern, I was about to say, is time. But on the one minute mark, that's where he's now sending the hog riders since he's confident the archer queen is getting that town hall. Yeah, now the question is, can he power it through? Just this get alone is not enough power. There goes the freeze for the town hall and the second rage. The queen is now, I was about to say, not, not raged up. That's the defensive rage. There's a lot of rages happening right now in that core. But the warning ability was early. The queen should get the town hall, but there's still defenses behind that. Yeah, I feel like he had to start the hog riders. I think he wanted the queen to get the town hall. Hogs to swoop around the backside of it. But with time ticking down, even if you fail, you have to consider if you time fail and have a bunch of troops on the board, that's not as good as sending them in early and just getting that percentage. And I really feel that's just what happened in this scenario, unfortunately. Yeah, this is really bad news for a strap because remember, they have, if they might lose this match, they have to play later today versus VN Esporting for an elimination match. Wow. And if VN Esporting has prepared some ring bases, this is showcased to be a really big weakness to Struts. I mean, they're playing their strategies, which is a lot of queen charges. And this is not the way on how you want to approach those ring bases. It, it has shown multiple times now that those queen charges just do not work versus those type of bases. And if an esporting might have pre like, pre prepared one of those, it might not look good. But now we're still in this match. Reported is up next and they could get a huge lead depending on whatever they do next. Absolutely, lots of speculation, and I would assume <laughs> that a lot of the teams do have ring bases yeah. because it always tends to be something that trips up a team every once in a while. But let's see what the next attack brings.
Tim Tastic is up next. And he is going in with the Lado. So he's not following his teammates with the Zap Titans. And he is going with his comfort attacks, which are the more like multiple stage attacks. I think we call them we could call it that way. Like last year he had like a crazy zap, one walk into Lado attack, strategy which has worked quite well for them. But this year, it seems to be just the regular Zap Lado, and that's what he's all about. And it's all about what his heroes can get, because if this queen is going to get the Town Hall, and this is what it looks like so far he is trying to aim for, that would be massive for him. Fantastic dexterity. You can just see his fingers all over on the iPad there, but controlling this fantastically well with the skeleton spell, tanking for the heroes and the monolith. He's really not taken much damage at this point with his heroes. The Archer Queen can sideswipe no defending heroes and then the monolith with the Royal Champion now reinforcing from the three o'clock area. This looks like a phenomenal opener to me. But remember, there is no invisibility spell. So the Queen, if the Clan Castle comes out, might be stuck on that for quite some time and where's the queen going next is it the ghost storage we know the queen sometimes likes to go different places but no it is on the tunnel and he's popping that ability right away that tunnel is down this opening looks massive and he even triggered the back end rage tower this looks just <laughs> and the second rage i mean are you kidding me all planned <laughs> of course. Oh, Vlad, the Archer Queen, like you said, the ability to just get that Town Hall down before she goes to the CC troops. Now we can see the Lalo moving in. Does he even swap the Siege Machine at this point? Had the Battle Blim, maybe just in case, or he sends it to the back end Scattershot to swipe that area, holding on to that Warden ability until they move through the multi-target range, which you can see pops it now with the Rage spell. More balloons with the Stone Slammer, yeah, for that, or the Battle Blimp, sorry, for that back end scatter shot. I'm wondering right now if this is really like the best siege which he thinks right now, or if it was more about like, okay, I want to get this scatter out and I maybe don't even have enough of a siege, but it doesn't matter. <laughs> After that hero power, he yep. just obliterated that base. And I think for all of the other teams out there, you do not want to use ring bases against Reparted. They know what they are doing. This is looking incredible. And Reparted and Temptastic are looking Really strong with yet another three star. Like I said, I thought he was one of the most impressive players last year. Coming out swinging on the opening attack of his three stars, putting Reported Gaming in the lead by a star with just one attack to go. And maybe Strut can take a little bit of lessons from these Zap Titans <laughs> and the Lalo because they are clearly working against this type of base. Yeah, I mean, you're right. They might just have to really make sure that for possible later match, they have to somehow, like, take the time and yeah. practice their offense versus ring base because it's just clear that it's not working versus the base from Reporter. But at the same time, the ring base is not the ring It's not a ring base. Like, th there's differences in yeah. how it's set up. And we have praised Reporter multiple times how good they are as base builders. So we still have to give credits where credits oh, are. <laughs> Deserves, but let's take a look at the next attack because we're going right in. Team Captain asked. This is it. He's got to get the three star in order to put the pressure on Reported so that they need that high percentage two star and even. You know, the three to get the victory. Flying straight in with the Battle Blimp, using the clone on the minions, just like we saw before. Managing to protect all of them so far, but how much value can he get here? He's got one more invisibility spell after this. Uh, have I missed something? Is Reported using the same base again? I mean, this looks exactly like the base which they have used earlier and got tripled with exactly this approach. I mean, except I'm missing something, but uh, well, at least this time, they have not gotten the same value overall mm. um, as in the last attack. So the question is, with both Rage Towers staying alive, is this still going to be enough? Well, it was such an overwhelming attack last time that you'd have to say most likely, but whenever there are heroes in the middle and just that little bit of unpredictability, 
that's what really can make the ring bases very effective. So Rage Tower does pop, instantly freezing to mitigate damage, and he's got the wall open so he can push in with his heroes, still holding on to that Royal Champion, just waiting for the right moment to reinforce with her. But he's still got a lot of Barbarians and Hog Riders as well. Yes, but this time around, there is a heavy back end. I mean, we see now Rage Up Scatter, Rage Up Monolith, and Rage Up Ultra Inferno Tower. I mean, we can just kind of skip the Bomb Tower, but at least a lot of Rage Up defenses. And take a look, that Titan is going down really quick. Yeah, he's gonna probably use the Queen ability in a moment here, unless he gets fortunate. Yeah, enemy Queen locked on, so the Queen ability is going to... No! Oh! I thought he was gonna press it manually. Oh, no. He was no. trying to save it. There's just so much damage, which you have to... Like, you have to use your hero abilities early. And this might be another defense. Still, I'm not sure what exactly happened here. Like, reported. have they messed up and used the same base again? Have I messed up and like recognized the base wrong or like it worked. What, what is going on here? But it has worked in the end. That is just crazy. And you said it as well, like it was an overwhelming first three star yeah. versus this base, and this has gone completely different. That's what I feel is one of the main strengths of a ring base. Even if you know how to take it down, you can do the same attack again, but just because of the unpredictability in the center, if something goes wrong, you have to be able to react, and a lot of the time, that's what ends up tripping up the players and even results in lower percentages as well. Definitely not the finish that Ast wanted, which means a strong two-star finish from Repotted would move them on and knock Strut down to the lower bracket to play VN, VN eSporting later today. That's right, and they are playing in our first elimination match, like the first team which would drop out of this competition. I mean, this is not where you want to be in, and especially for Strut, this has happened to them last year. So, well, first, Reported has to get two stars, which is normally a challenge which you can handle. I mean, that should be possible for sure. But especially on ring bases, as we have seen, things can go wrong. So let's see what the safest approach, for, in their opinion, is with seeing yet again how their queen is going down. And even with the added pressure, you know, you think a two-star is, oh yeah, they got this in the bag. But with the added pressure of the World Championship Finals, it's certainly not easy, you know? So we will have to find out whether they can do that. I have confidence they can, but it's pressure is still on at this point. Let's see if they can do it. The last attack for this match. Reported needs two stars, and we see a complete different base. Maybe Musk has forgotten to switch the spare towers, because I see poison towers. What is going on there? Maybe it's a secret defense of strategy. I, I did reference the super bowlers earlier, which obviously are going to be used in this case with a cloned Yeti blimp into. Gets the Eagle, will get the multi-target Inferno, and a bunch of the surrounding defenses as well. That's just looking great. I mean, Temper is like one of the craziest German players there is, which is really hard to say because there's two Tribe Gaming, which are arguably quite good. So Temper is just really, really insane as well, and does a lot of times more creative styles like this one. Like, I would say Yeti Clone Blimp is not that common, but he did a really good job in like funneling the one corner, other corner now with the king, and those super bowlers should have no other way than just going straight for the core. There's not as much damage with having poison towers now. We've got to shout out the real MVP, the cleanup lava pup over there at 10 o'clock, just making sure he doesn't time fail. Like you said, the beautiful funnel set up to the three o'clock area so the super bowlers can move in and they can get that bounce through the town hall as well with the warden ability still left to use. He can use that in combination with the rage. Here we go to try and push through the back end defenses as well and bring themselves closer to victory, Itsu. And take a look at that. The bowl has bounced that town hall over the ice goal which means he could now delay that Warden ability. That is just such a massive play of delaying the Warden. And now he has blocked the majority of the town of Poison. Red Mines are getting blocked. This Warden ability was clutch. 
Amazing job. He's still got the Archer Queen ability, the Royal Champion ability, and the Freeze. Percentage is surely there, but he wants the three star to give a dominant victory for Repotted as well. As the RC ability is used, freezing the enemy queen, it's not quite going to be the three star, but he's done what he needed to do, and Repotted Gaming get the victory in this one. 12 to 13 is going to be the final score. Reported is going to be your winner. And they're going to face Navi later this weekend. <laughs> And with the strength of their defenses, I really look forward to seeing that matchup. But we will be seeing Strut later today in the lower bracket matchup. Let's find the final percentage. 84% it is going to be, and we will have the celebration of Reported Gaming. What a performance, offensively and defensively. Fantastic job. I told you it was difficult to predict, but it is Reported Gaming with the victory. What a great match that was indeed. We have said defense is going to be an important factor, and I think it was. Both teams with the ring bases are reported with a better strategy against it. Yeah, they had the counter, and like I said, I will certainly be taking notes because I do not like attacking those. The Electro Titans shredding through the inside, even the Lalo. I don't think I'll maybe get to that level of Timtastic, but phenomenal job. They kept their cool through that entire process as well, and I look forward to seeing how far they can go. That's right, but let's hear from the players himself, and let's see what they have to say. Let's go down to the stage. Well, I have Reported Gaming right here, the winners of this last match. And first of all, I want to say congratulations, guys. Amazing job. And uh, first question is, do you think your preparation paid off in this match? Uh, I think the preparation paid off, yeah. <laughs> I mean, you all saw it, like, the offense looked pretty good. Like, only Tampa had to do a safe two-star in the end. And defense as well, like, we defended better than we thought we would. And yeah, that's pretty, pretty good, I would. Awesome, and that leads me to the second question actually that I was going to ask, and that is, did Temper change his plan in the end to get the safe two-star, or was it the plan all along? Yeah, for sure, he, ch he changed it. He wanted to do some crazy stuff like heroes only for the town hall, and then the RC for funnel, and then we said, yeah, just do the super bowlers and we'll be fine. Yeah, great job. I mean, a two-star is sometimes worth more than a three-star, as you can tell. And then I want to know, you, you prepared specifically for Strut. What's the team you prepared second most? Nah, I got our next opponent, Navi. Yeah. Okay, that's the confidence we need to see here. So give it up once more for Reported Gaming as we go back to the casters. Thank you so much, Maxi. Always great to hear from the team and just how much the preparation paid off. Eric, what did you think of that matchup? That was a very impressive performance there from Reported, but I think I heard from a lot of people that Reported has been very, very uh, good lately, and so I'm not too surprised there. I knew, I think a lot of people thought that was a coin toss on which of those two teams would win. Yeah, I think <clears throat> both teams were really, really close when it comes down to like their defensive skills over the year as well, and offense in the end. Well, we potted just had straight up the better counter. You can see it here with the stats, and pretty much all their three stars were with this Zap Titan strategy. Yeah, the average destruction there as well, well over 95%. Unfortunate turn of events for Strut, but they will have their opportunity to turn things around later today. I think it was a phenomenal performance from Reported. They deserve all of the credit for that one. And just, I don't know, I'm just observing how fantastic this place looks. Absolutely, it's a crazy, crazy arena here. It's just kind of surreal to be in, in this, uh, place here just with everybody it's amazing every single year absolutely love the atmosphere and the teams are putting on a really good show for us today too yeah i mean as well the audience cheering for the teams good defense good defense good offense everything is there but i think eric you had a attack prepared which you want to break down absolutely i want to take a look at uh dark stars attack they didn't take the win today but i still wanted to go ahead and take a little bit of a look at this super a uh, minion bomb, actually. He did a super minion bomb, which is a massive way to set up a base to go in for anything you want to follow it up with. But just drop it in there with the clones like Judo said during the, during when it was live, spreading out those invis, or those uh, clones, I mean, before you make it invisible to make so that you can 
get a nice spread of those super minions. And if you get a lot of defense down, just like the super archer bomb, you're going to be able to just basically cripple that base there. You do not want to have the invisibilities miss and have those super minions unprotected. But if you're able to get a big chunk of the base there out like that, then you can follow it up with just about anything, and you're going to just walk through the base there like you did. So yeah, that was that was a very, very insane way to set it up there. And after that, like, how could you even possibly miss that attack there, Itsu? That was right. That was just really, really impressive. With the opening, Super Minion survived, took down the entire core. We have tried to count how many key defenses went down. But I think we should jump forward to the next section, which is going to be with Darian, well, in the viewer launch. Hello, Clash Fest. So, as I said earlier, we're going to be doing some cool merch giveaways during Clash Fest. And here's the first challenge. I want you to help me find a home for this little guy. What I want to see is your photos, comments, if you're at Clash Fest or if you're watching at home, post on social media using the hashtags Clash Fest, Clash Worlds, and Clash Esports. At the end of each day, I'm going to be looking through your social media comments, and I'm going to pick my favorite one and give you some cool merch, like this little guy. And whether you're watching from here or watching from home, make sure you say hi to our international casters, whether you're saying Konnichiwa, Bonjour, Buenos Dias, Annyeonghaseyo, Guten Tag, Bonjourno, Bon dia or Ni Hao. Let's take it back to the table. Very impressive there, Darian. We have had two matches. We've got three left to go today. So I think we should go over those matches to give everyone at home a bit of a recap as to where we are in the finals here, Eric. Absolutely, and after that big win there for Navi and for Rapata, they're moving on to the semi, or something in the se yeah, semifinals in the upper bracket there. And so as we move along these quarterfinals, we can see that up ahead, the next match here is going to be Tribe Gaming versus Class Champs, and then Super BLTX and Early Attacks. And then we'll go down to the lower bracket for the end of the day here. But we got a lot of action ahead of us. But it's time to get these teams out here and see who our next matchup is going to be. That's right, we have the next teams coming up, and first in this well-awaited match is going to be Tribe Gaming! second team, one of the biggest rivals of our first team, is going to be Crash Champs! Let's give it up! Champs. Both these teams have so much experience going against each other head to head. One of the most looked forward to matches during day one here. I can't wait, Eric. Oh yeah, and these teams have faced a lot, each other a lot in a lot of the community tournaments recently, and so we've got a little bit of a preview here and there to see maybe what could happen here. But what was really interesting is pretty much all of those went back and forth there. This yeah. is probably one of the most evenly matched set of teams here in this competition, I would think. Absolutely, with Tribe Gaming, we've got Exorcist, Kronos, 
Yo-Yo, Rikirez, Nebrex, and they are all ready to go here today. They want to bring it because the craziness is they go back and forth. One team gets a perfect war, the other team gets a perfect war, but this is a killer lineup here for Clash Champs. It is Lino, Leo, B, Castro, Pato, and Loop are from Brazil. This is a very, very strong squad here. And every time we see them play, they're busting out something crazy, always putting on a good show here. And their hit rates definitely match it. But it looks like we got our audience prediction yeah. here. And it looks like they're in the favor of Tribe Gaming. Is That that might be influenced yeah. by Tribe Gaming getting oh. second place in last year's World Championship. I don't yeah. know. What do you think here? <laughs> well, Tribe Gaming taking home 68% of the poll that they think they're going to win. But Clash Champs are looking to prove that wrong. It is going to be in an amazing match. Are you ready for this match between Tribe Gaming and Clash Champs? Let's kick it off for the first attack. And P. Castro is starting this one off for Clash Champs, doing his signature Skelly Donut, but it's not Skeleton Spells, it's a Bat Spell, so it's more a Bat Donut coming into a Lalo attack here, Eric. Feels really risky. I'm looking at that sweeper, looking all over the place. They're trying to find a target. Finally gets a little bit of, uh, of air boost out there and not able to get anything before the targets are down, so good initial setup here, but you'll notice he didn't take out any of the buildings like the Clan Castle, so he still needs to go deal with that. He's got a poison on Stand by here, so he's prepared. And the bats keep on working and pick up an extra expo, and they're still moving up to the mortar here. Insane look, value out of that. Look at this with the Electro Titan now joining in with the king. The perfect time is to have the Electro Titan take care of any ground skeletons, which would really slow up a defensive or def slow up your king as the Clan Castle will also be now lured out. That's where the Electro Titan can help take those troops down. Yeah, get something to be able to target the air troops there, but the Super Mini step up with the poison. Even if it was like a Lava Hound or something like that, the Electro Titan would be able to power through that as well, but the Queen deployed down the line, where Champ goes right in between, but the Wall Breaker is used, and Ice Golem to take the lead for the Queen to push into that offensive Queen. He's not gonna, he probably, probably not gonna get the Town Hall out of this push here, but he does have a blimp on standby. I do like that for this base setup. And here we go, we see Lalo coming to the very bottom, gonna use the blimp to sail across under the ward ability and go secure the Town takedown while the heroes continue to work on the left side. And look at that blimp just fly all the way across, but he does find a tornado trap here as it continues this push with the blues. This is a classic Clash Champs approach to Lalo, where you're breaking it apart and sending in a warded blimp to help try to secure the Town Hall as it does go down with a Lava Hound and 14 balloons, yet a Dragon Rider still to utilize. Oh, had to be careful of that defensive road champ to the backside, but he's still sending up three headhunters. Here we go, more balloons in from the right. Last Hound deploys down, looking very good. There's the Hound burst over the right side, and he just needs to get the headhunters in. They're on target, they take her down, and now he just needs to march his way into the core of the base here, and the Dragon Rider gonna provide some big assistance with that. The Warden is still alive, and I'm still seeing the Queen alive to the left side here. This is looking very solid. And I want to say, like, often when when Pete Castro opens a war with a triple for Class Champs, they very, very rarely use, lose. He rallies the team, he sets the pace here, oh, and he's yeah. done it again hey. for Class Champs. What an attack here for Pete Castro, starting it off strong with a three-star. An unbelievable attack, taking out those key defenses, not removing a clan castle with the Bat Donut, but taking out the multi, taking out a scatter shot. Incredible job keeping their call. They don't want to get too far ahead of themselves. They are focused on the rest of the attacks. They know they're going to have to be putting up 13, 14 stars, mm -hmm. or even, you know, they got to go for the 15-star war against a team like Tribe Gaming because they both done it against each other so recently that they know every single star is so important. Absolutely. In fact, the last two times these teams faced within the last week here, while we were out here in Finland, they both had a perfect war against each other, so we know what these teams are capable of. They consistently hit over a 13-star per war hit rate right there, which would be 60% of the time getting the triple to go through. But let's get into our next attack here as they respond. Ebron. 
Fox is going to be breaking out Super Dragons for this one. He's got Recall. He's got a little bit of a Queen Charge here. And we know that Nebrox is very, very skilled with a lot of different drag attacks here. It is his specialty. He's got an eye for it. And when he sees what he needs on a base there to make him work, rarely, rarely has an issue taking that base down. So we'll see what the Super Dragons can do here as he starts off with that funnel, picking up the first air defense on the outside of the base, getting the funnel formed here with the Queen, holding on to a seed machine, probably for a Town Hall takedown. He's got the blimp selected at the moment, and he just needs to get the Queen to go forward here until she's put into danger. In fact, he goes all the way to the Eagle Artillery and freezes the Monolith, conserving as many spells as possible, then pull that Queen out of there and redeploy her over the right, set the funnel for both sides of the Super Dragon entry. Yeah, with that queen off to the right side, the super dragons are now clear to be deployed to the bottom side to move through this base, and that blimp will be used with the warden internal tome to get it all the way to that. Oh, wait, maybe not. He pops the warden building <laughs> super early. There's no blimp in sight. Yeah, but that blimp is so close to the top quarter of the base there. Maybe he's going to take a closer path there from that top quarter. But look at all the air defenses. Look at the king. There's a lot of threats up there that he would need to deal with. But look at this. He's going to delay that blimp. He sends it now after the super dragons have cleared most of the potential traps in between the entry and the town hall so he's gonna probably arrive as long as he doesn't get stuck in a tornado trap and it looks like that blimp is successful and arrives to take the town down and look at that the yetis come out they continue to move through because if you go with balloons they will all instantly die when the town hall explodes but the yetis are now providing distractions and protecting his heroes moving up through this base so those yetis getting some fantastic values he continues his way through but Super Dragons are all now down. It's up to his heroes with the Raw Champion to finish this base off. 40% still to go, Eric. Yeah, but he's got that Queen Charge that is moving through, or really a Queen Walk, say, to the outside of the base there, but she's going to have almost no extra support there, so is really heavily relying on the Dragons to clear a lot of the damage and minimize the amount of damage that she could take so she can survive through for more Champion deployed over the right. Going to cut right across the core of the base there and engage that defensive Grand Warden directly, and he does seem to get that area under control there as he makes the final push in these last couple defenses. Yep. He's got a freeze on standby. He's looking pretty good here, Carmen. He's looking pretty good here as the RC and her ability will be clutch. A freeze is now used onto that scatter shot. The crowd expo. 40 seconds left. The RC ability is now going off. She should now target towards that scatter, but that dicky is going to be fantastic. The healers are actually taking. You don't need the healers anymore <laughs> because the Royal Champion can continue to move through. But the scatter shot might just take her out. The dicky is gone. Get in there. Get in there. Oh, get in no, there. No, no, no stuns. No. Tornado. Oh, oh, she's gone! Okay, okay, he's gonna get back there, but he's gotta go through Queen. a wall to get there. Queen. Wait, maybe, maybe, maybe the Yeti. Maybe the top side, but where's it gonna go? What is Queen, you gotta walk all the way to the left. <laughs> you gotta walk all the way to the left, Queen. She does. Know. Oh, she's going. She tries her she... best. She needs to make it all the way through a crowd skeleton. Pop up! Come on, Queen, get a shot off it. Is it low health? No, 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 no. 99%. Wow. Champs is going to pick up the defense on that one. That's a heartbreaker right there. He had everything moving to that area, but the ground scale has held up the road champion for so long. She was in charge of that target, and she ended up missing it. Very, very unfortunate, but that's the way it plays out. It comes down to the Diggy, needing the Diggy to stay alive because right here, if the Diggy was still there, would have gotten up, stunned that scatter shot, and then taken the shots after that because it will reset its target. What a defense here from Clash Champs. One building is what it could take in this match to make all the difference here. Unbelievable. Nibrax coming this close. But hey, we have so many more attacks to come here in this match as the next attack for Clash Champs is now ready. in with Super Barbarians. Two clone spells usually going to be used with that blimp. Use it with some Super Minions because then they can help reach that Milef and even that scatter shot would be fantastic. And the reason why you may go Super Min... No, no Super Minions here. He's going Wall Breakers and Super Archers. I would have been scared because all the area for a potential right. giant bombs. Yeah, lots of area right there, but he didn't land on top of the bomb tower, so that was important there. 
So he doesn't immediately get blasted by it, but he does get close enough to be able to secure the Town Hall takedown, working on it, and then hopefully doesn't get distracted too much by the defensive clan castle troops there because he would really, really like to get that model down. He's distracted, but he oh, yes! does take the strikes at the defensive clan oh. castle troops, and the arrows pass through them and finish that monolith off. So he's got wow. it under control, and he did get a decent amount of value, but is it enough? We have the Rage Tower to the bottom side, slowly coming back, plus a defensive king down there. That can be a big problem, but what he's going to do is save a handful of headhunters, maybe three headhunters for the king at the very end. Keep your eye on that as he now sends the Super Barbarians up and around towards the top side into the Eagle Artillery. This is where you can use the Royal Champion to help try to snipe the middle multi-target Inferno because he has no way of grabbing it with his heroes, but he is using a couple wall breaks. That might be the play to get his queen into the core, and it is! Very, very important here, though, that he does have the king and the queen in the wow. board and be the first to arrive into that defensive queen. You can't put your royal champion into a defensive hero or she's gonna get wrecked. But he does have some way to engage her. He's actually coming at him from, at him from multiple different angles here. Here comes Headhunters as the tank can arise, and now he's safe to deploy the royal champion wherever he decides to put her. But where do, where is that? Do you put her from the bottom, trying to save time, or do you put her in to go support the top? But the Headhunters are able to get the defensive queen down. He does circle into the inside of the base there, and Unfortunately, his king and queen are going to be trapped in there as they're going to have to break through a wall to be able to get out. So he's going to need some outside support here. It's going to have to be heavy, and we're still looking at a very, very dense bottom corner there with the king, the yeah. Tesla farm, and that rage tower that has rearmed now. Yeah, that rage tower is going to be a big problem. Drops one super barbarian to go grab the wizard tower as he continues his way to the bottom side. Look, there's the headhunters. They're being used on the defensive king to help this RC get through this section. He's trying to stay clear of the multi, which now gets ranged up as the... Queen, King, find the tornado trap as he needs to continue through with the RC ability. Yeah, the RC ability can clear the Tesla farm though, so that's a very, very big way to get a lot of these defenses out of the way here. Thin out the damage, steps in, gets the stun on the multi inferno, able to get it down. Or is the stun is the stun the impossible? Is Diggy even still there? I can't see the Diggy, but I think it's gone, but it's okay. He's got the defense under control there. Wow. And Pato gets another one on the board for Clash Champs. Look at that. Three stars again for Clash Champs. What a way to kick it off in this match for them. Now they can start focusing on helping their clanmates to be able to help provide some plans, making sure to double, triple check every single thing. Because you know what happens. You forget a certain CC troop. You forget some, a maybe a fling fling or a blimp. You know, you never know. You have to bring as many as possible just in case if you have to change it on the fly. But these attackers need to be bringing in three stars. Pato getting that celebration. We love to see it. Delivering for Clash Champs here. Very dangerous position now for, uh, for Tribe Gaming because if they are not able to get this next triple, that 99% is really going to come back to haunt them. And so they don't want to fall two stars behind. But let's get into our next attack. So much noise coming from the audience here. Sounds like sounds like the Class Champs fans there trying to distract Kronos as he goes in with a queen charge into Twin Hog here. Not a lot of hogs on this one. He's got a lot of miscellaneous extra troops here that he can use to support. Lots of headhunters. Got the recall spell as well. Even a qu he brought a single quake here. What do you think that's going to be used for, Carmen? That's a great question. Maybe for the town hall, because the flame flinger then go after it after it recalls this queen back. Kronos is the captain of Tribe Gaming here. He's looking to bring a three star, but, you know, out of all the players in the competition, Kronos is the one that actually has the most one stars out of all the players really? here. He has 10 one stars. Yes, so I don't expect that to happen here because he's got the flame flinger going to go for the tunnel. He could use an earthquake to activate it, but he's going to now redeploy this queen to the bottom side as the king is going to look to help try to path in towards that monolith. It becomes very difficult here when you're attacking top and bottom of the base at the same time because it's hard to be able to keep track of exactly what you need to do with your heroes, but at the same time, making sure the flame flinger does not have any issues going on there. If any traps pop on it, then that could definitely be the big issue here, but he did go ahead and activate it now as he starts to strike buildings that actually have to 
get repaired there by the battle builders, but it's going to be potentially back to full HP by the time he locks onto it. But the hero's ah, doing a good job Phoenix. down south. And he, yeah, oh, all right. Oh, 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 look at the Hogs here going in. And he does take that model down and saves the Queen with a very reactionary invisibility. Oh. Queen still under danger here. Rocket Blue's right ahead. And they do not take her down, but she did get forced to ability. Yeah, that Open the Hound. What's the Hound doing? Oh, no. Oh, the Hound. It's going up to the Flame Flinger up there. It's going to slowly do some damage. As now he can pop this Warden ability. Protects the Hogs. Protects Queen's the Hound. The Queen goes down. Okay, well, this is a big problem here. Crota's in a lot of trouble on this one. Still working the down hall, but that Flame Flinger is going to be popping open just a moment. That Lava Hound doesn't do a lot of damage, but that thing does not have a lot of HP. But he does get there with the Roar Champion. He's going to make sure that he, at a bare minimum, secures the two-star. But there's a lot of base left here, and he's quickly dwindling out here. And that means that it looks like Last Chance is going to be starting off this match. Wow. Two stars up over Tribe Gaming. Look at that. Two triples for Clash Champs and two fails here for Tribe Gaming. And this one is in the 70s, a very low percentage. And at this point, Tribe knows that they're going to have to win on stars that have a chance in this match. I like the very last little push right there. Doesn't waste even a little bit at the end there. That's where the team talks. You see that last wall breaker that went in and was able to just explode onto a low HP building, get a little tiny bit more percentage. Every little bit could make a difference in the end and can't take any of it for granted. But here is, I mean, that, that was that's a rough way to start this war here for Tribe Gaming. Yeah, he wanted that queen to charge to the left side to be able to grab a scatter, a multi, everything over there. But unfortunately, that queen ability being forced too soon and losing those healers. You love to see the Clash Champs not only celebrating on the offensive side, but celebrating on the defensive side when they're holding a team like Tribe Gaming, who many might have had them winning this as a prediction. But we're going to see now what Clash Champs can do. Can they go? Three for three to start off this match. And now Leo is coming in with Super Bar Variants. It's one of the most common metas at Town Hall 15 amongst these pros because of how strong they are with the base designs. As the balloons are used out front, he can drop the blimp. He drops a headhunter in there to help take out the enemy world champ. Yes, indeed. As the goal of these balloons are not only to take out these defenses, but really to try to also make it to help grab this scatter shot. Yeah, get more value out of the ward ability by just tossing a couple extra troops instead of going absolute bare minimum. You're not just trying to save the blimp. You gotta save the headhunters to get the hero down. You gotta save the balloons to get some defense down. And with less invisibility wow. used on this one, instead of doing Super Archers, he opts Ooh. for the Super Minions, and he's able to take a that. big chunk of the base down. And it looks like he did. Now, there is one downside of using Super Minions here, and that is that it only pulls out air targeting Clan Castle troops there. So there might be something heavy in there. The Super Minions were not able to destroy the building for the Clan Castle, so any troops will be in there still that didn't actually go down initially. So he needs to keep that in mind here. I didn't see exactly what came out, but I guess we'll find out soon enough. Yeah, as his king is probably going to join in with this queen very soon to help protect her to the left side. There's the ice golem to move in towards this grand warden altar. A couple super barbarians will be deployed to make this queen path in towards the eagle artillery. As he continues to work around, he can drop that apprentice warden with the queen potentially to really help boost her HP as the king is now down. As the queen should easily path into the eagle now. A very good path in here to be able to transition between compartments here all the way until we get to the defensive queen. We've got wall breakers in standby, so definitely has a plan in place there to deal with it. But here comes the extra clan castle troops. There's a couple of rocket balloons, and that means the other ones were already dealt with. The queen can quickly handle that, which Titan nowhere to be found down south. Not going to support with that, but that's okay. Here comes the wall break. First wall breaker was successful. Second one's going deep in the core of the base there. And look at where it landed, right into the rage tower compartment. And that's going to get the king and the queen to transition south and be able to assist with him into this bottom corner and keep pushing the right side. 
Yeah, no more wall breaks for this queen, so she's gonna have to make her way around the bottom side as the Axel raged up is forcing that queen ability. But now we have to push through the, towards that defensive king. Does have one headhunter to help try to slow and take him down as the royal champion now needs to make its way into the mile. One freeze can really help protect the RC. She does okay. get locked on by the monolith. Very good, very good. Got the stun wow. right there. They're already cheering. They're already cheering. They're going crazy and they deserve it. It's another triple. Clash Champs has three on the board. It's going to have to be a full reverse sweep here for Tribe <laughs> Game to swing this back. This is total domination so far. Clash Champs coming here and really making a statement. Three for three in this match. And I mean, the last time they played, Last Champs did put up that perfect floor against Tribe Gaming. Tribe's bases are not holding, as we're seeing the value of the super minions able to grab the Town Hall, the multi, the scatter shot. So much here was incredible from Leo. Yeah, and I saw that there were some defensive super minions just kind of mixed in with the offensive super minions. There's so many of them running around the area there. <laughs> it's all chaos at the start of the there, but it's controlled chaos. And yes. Maybe that's just how they live. I don't know. But they definitely have started off very, very strong here. And if, I mean, you look at those predictions from the start of the match there, and everybody was looking at Tribe. A lot of people were looking at Tribe, yes. but that doesn't seem to be the way it's playing out. But maybe Tribe can swing it around right now. Exocyst is going to put his faith in the Queen Charge into Super Barbarians. He does have a bunch of balloons and a blimp here selected at the moment here, but he's just going to be starting with the Queen to go after the Defensive King. Nice headhunter down, nice simple approach, directly targeting all the defenses along the edge there. That is going to funnel the Queen to go north on the base, our Keeper under control. And it looks like he, oh, I like that, using the haste with the blues to go after the multi inferno that also triggers any potential traps that would stop him from securing the town takedown and then the blimp taking the town hall will be used as his initial funneling point to keep the queen safe and moving north to the top side of the base and look at that able to help remove the town hall with just a freeze didn't have to rage up the yetis there's a couple sneaky goblins inside of the blimp to help remove it nice and easy as the queen is charging her way with the assistance of this apprentice warden which is going to help speed up the queen charge helping take down those defenses as the healers are raged up to get through the raw champ the scatter shot and the defensive rage with three super wall breakers to try to help with this queen charge he's going exactly where he'd like him to the queen able to reach into that compartment and just go down the channel here comes the first wall breaks right now trying to get the queen to transition forward can't get it with just one you got to go for two but the first one does get a lot of access granted so we can reach multi inferno and King keeping that expo under control up top there, but looks like the Queen chasing a Lava Hound off yeah. for a minute there, and she stays inside of the range of the Monolith, so she's gonna stay under a sustained heavy, heavy fire here, but the extra wall breakers were successful, and now he has full access in the core of the base here, but he has to keep this Queen alive. Yeah, that Queen Key stays under rage with these healers, gonna be able to grab the multi, the mild, the back end multi as well, as he continues around with Super Barbarians, as the Royal Champion will make her way to the left with the defending Queen to the bottom but get ready for these defenses about to be raged up as once he enters this area the royal champion will trigger it and there's the rage this is going to do a lot of damage here but one super barbarian left the defensive queen is down there he drops another super barb trying to help take her down but is not able to do it queen's gonna be the last line of defense on the base here he has to find a way to get through here he goes invisible with his royal champion but hasn't locked on yet we have one more headhunter on its way in right now everybody not going to the queen there's another freeze they're ignoring Get sniped off. Oh! This, uh, he's still looking all right. He's already no! killed. Yeah. No! That queen's not going to cause any problems. No! Not even a thought in his mind there that he would fail that. He's got it under control. And now we have to see this trend continue. We have to see them pick up some defenses. But that's a step in the right direction and gives them a chance to make the comeback. This is the momentum shift they need. Granted, Clash Champs have three triples. If it's a defense, that will be huge for a Tribe. This will be helping with Tribe's mindset now that we saw our first three star. Can we get more? They have to deliver. We saw now Exorcist coming in with the Super Barbarians getting the value moving in and out of these compartments with ease. And look at that. We love those celebrations in from Tribe. Getting it done. 
Now they have to stay focused. They have two amazing attackers left, Yo-Yo and Rikiris. Rikiris, the highest hit rate player in this whole tournament here at 70%. No other player is at that mark. So we'll have to pay attention to his attack, but can Clash Champs get a fourth triple? Let's find out. What looks to be a, well, I was gonna say a Skelly Donut. It looks like he is, but he's not going for the Clan Castle. He's going for the Multis. I think he wanted that Monolith there. Yep. He accidentally made that Monolith invisible at the very start. It's okay, it's okay. The Bats have a lot of firepower here. They can make their way back over to it. They actually get the extra Battle Builders as well. There he gets, oh, he's getting a lot of extra wow. value out of that. Very, very good value for Loop. And this is a critical moment of this war here. The chance for a Tribe just kind of hangs in the balance on this one here. We, we can just hear the crowd chanting that they want the defense. You can hear those Tribe Gaming fans making some noise in the crowd here. And let's see if Luke can handle the pressure right now to keep his team safe. You cannot take it easy at this point here. We've got Grand Skelly popping into this Royal Champion. He's got the Tessas in that area as well. Beat some resistance right there. And the Queen is making her way north. Now notice the Queen is not necessarily happened to take the Town Hall herself. And she definitely will not. But he has the Sneaky Goblins on standby there. So she needs to get the storage out of the way so the Sneaky Goblins have a path to get inside of the base. But we still see another storage over yeah. right where the Royal Champion is standing. We could actually messed up the pathing here for the Sneaky Goblins, but he's gonna go ahead and try to snipe it up now while he's still got some tanking, invest a couple of them there, but he needs to secure this Town Hall takedown with the Goblins no matter what. As we have Ice Golems now here, won't be a big threat to the Wallow, as Sneaky Goblins need to go in. He drops one test Sneaky, he activates the Tornado, Ooh. he activates the Dumb Up, but this means he has to wait. He can't deploy this. This could come back as a time fail if he's if he's moving in here as the Sneakies make their way to the Invis. Locking up the Town Hall with the Sneaky Goblins, and now the Lalo can commence. Here we go, the most important part of the attack here, gonna be going to the late Eagle Artillery approach here. Slammer goes into the very top to go after Multi Inferno. Couple of balloons to just give it a, a little bit of cover and pick up the outside defenses. Perfect amount invested into that to give the support that he needs. And there's the ward ability going through the defensive road champion. Oh. Headhunters under the ward ability, got that under control. But we got Ice Golems going his way here, and that could be a little bit of a problem, maybe not. Actually, that's Wait. perfectly fine. The Headhunters, they were not able to remove oh. the Royal Champion. Oh. She stayed up, they found Spring Traps, and the one was not able to do it, so he drops the poison spell to help try to take the RC down. But she's slowly going to be picking these balloons off as he continues his way down to the south. He's only got four more balloons, Eric. Yeah, all right, well, he's got those balloons going to the very bottom as the Hound arrives. The Eagle Artillery Strikes go to that Hound. The Slammer is going to be the last ditch effort to try to get this base down. Still, but the Freeze is not able to cover the Air Defense and the Grand Warden, so he missed some value on that. He's out of spells now. He's just coasting. He's got a couple clean troops yep. that he toss in wherever he needs time, to, time, but he's got time. a lot of base to cover. And you're right, time, time, because he has to go through the defenses on yeah. the right. He's go all the way up to the Expos there. There's not enough oh. time. It's looking like the defense is going in the favor of Tribe and giving them a chance right after they pick up that triple. Oh my, look at that. Time is not going to be on his side. He had to wait. The Tornado Trap out with the Sneaky Goblins. And he's gonna get a 96%. But that's okay because they have the percentage advantage. They do. Which means that Tribe still must triple out to have any chance and hope for a low percentage defense. It's gonna come down to Yo-Yo and Rikiras. What can they do for Tribe? Class Champ still controls this war very, very heavily right now. So it's their war to lose right now. And Tribe Jamie just trying to do whatever they can to be able to keep up. And they're doing a pretty good job so far, but they have to get a second triple in a row here. And so this next attack is critically important. If they miss this one here, then the chances for the comeback drop off dramatically. But let's see what happens and let's get into this next attack. Kira is hitting right now out of any player in this 2023 Clash of Clans World Championship, hitting at a 70% hit rate. 
The next closest is at 66%. Wow. And that's Pete Castro of Clash Champs coming in. So the top two players in these teams here as Riquera is coming in with a Skelly, Dona, Lalo, looking to remove the Monolith and the Clan Castle to start. Very, very simple approach here. The buildings are perfectly lined up there, so it makes the spell plays a bit rather simple. But he does get his two targets down. And it looks like he's, uh, he holds on to one invisible. Or did he, yeah, he he has one extra invisibility, and now that I'm seeing that he has sneaky goblins as well, he could use that extra one to secure the tower takedown with those sneaky goblins if yeah. it's set up properly. So that could definitely be a very, very good option. And I've actually seen him using this attack a lot recently, so I, I feel like that's what he's going for here. Look at this. The queen's going to be going for the storages in front of the town hall. The king is going to be going for that multi-target inferno and even grab the royal champion because she's going to jump over that wall. True. Some fantastic value to start, but we you have a poison spell behind the town hall. If he activates it, it gets tossed in front. He has to wait it out, but he might start his Lalo early because he knows he has a three star no matter what. But the poison got launched to the king, so he's clear and safe in front of the town hall. Yeah, Phoenix will pick that king back up there so we can fight off that road champion as soon as he gets done with those ground skills. I don't think he's going to win that fight, though. I feel like he's going to leave that defensive road champion up, but does get the storage out of the way. The queen goes over there. Maybe she can get yeah. the assist and get it down because, like we said, he doesn't need the queen to take the town hall. The seat goblins are right there. He's got the invisibility, it. and it looks like he's got it under control, and the RC on defense does indeed go down. You always in a Lalo, you want to have your heroes take out either the defensive queen or the world champion because you need to have the other set prepared to take out the, the other defensive hero with headhunters protected under award ability. Very, very important, but now, moment of truth here for right. Rakiris. Look at this. He's got to drop headhunters under this warden. Get ready. When he pops a warden building, headhunters must be there to go for this defensive queen. Just keep your eye on if there's any spring traps. But wait, no, the king's down there. Yeah, He's got to drop him from He's the top side. They've got to go from the top king. left. Absolutely, yeah. yeah. they got to sneak in just that and try to help take down the enemy queen. Hasn't attempted it yet there. The world champion Hang will be the on. first to arrive into the defensive queen under warden ability. She is going to get her down, so that works out perfectly. Down south, we do have the Slammer open up into Rocket Blues to get another scatter shot. They're going to take it right there. Swarming into the backside. Multi-Inferno looking Great. good here. Great. RC ability still intact here, still moving. Rikiris has a ton of time left here as well. But it's a rage of Multi doing so much damage to these balloons. They are going down one at a time. The Royal Champion's taking a lot of damage with the Diggy. Stuns the Expo as he continues his way through. The Bomb Tower explodes, damaging even more. 26 Blue seconds. Blue he drops the balloons to try to take the Archer oh, Tower. RC. Oh, RC goes down! Oh, come on, come on, come on. Get that uh, last Archer Tower down. He's got a bunch oh, of troops swarming oh, in. Diggy takes oh. one of them. He's still got it under control. He's got wow. the time! Rikiraz will pick it with a triple here for Tribe Gaming. And they have leveled out the score. They're within reach. They just need another defense, and they have their chance. One more defense is what they are looking for to try to make a comeback to Clash Champs. But Clash Champs want to end their hopes with their next attack because the most Tribe Gaming can get is 13 stars. If Clash Champs get a three star, that puts them to 14 and Tribe Gaming will have no chance. Remember, this is the third match here in the World Championship. This is the very start. It's a double elimination. If you lose, you go down to the lower bracket and you still have one more try. But if you lose a second time, that is when you are eliminated from the competition, have no chance at winning it. As here we go, can Clash Champs and Tribe Gaming's hope in the upper bracket. Let's find out. Time and time again, the wars land in the hands of Selenio, one of the most clutch closers in all of Clash of Clans. Let's see if he can make this happen as he goes in with this blimp to set us up here. He's got the double clone. He's got a lot of invisibility here. He has the option of super archers or super minions here. And it looks like he's going down to the ground here and trying to see what kind of value he can get out of this as all the pressure is on the line. Remember, he doesn't necessarily have to triple this. He has to get a, a solid amount of percentage here because their previous one was such a high percentage that it does make these stakes here a little bit easier, wow. but he does get a lot of value out of that. And we're, I think uh, Carbon is calculating here, 79% would be the tie. Yep. So he needs 80% to cross through and knock Tribe Gaming down a lower bracket. 80% is the mark. 
that Salino needs a hit. Remember, Salino was the one that had to get back-to-back -back triples to get them to Helsinki in the World Championship. He's definitely capable of delivering when they need it. As we got Super Barbarians to use up and around the space, the value's already there to the bottom side. At this point, all he needs is the percentage to give Clash Champs the victory. Just need to keep on moving here. Got the defensive CC under control. The Electric Titan is right there, so watch those Lava Pups there. Boom, and there they go as they instantly get evaporated into that Electro Titan's aura and keep the heroes moving smooth. No poison necessary in that, but there's the ward ability tied with the King ability. It Able to get all the barbarians protected under the ward ability and surge forward to get maximum value out of him. And as long as the queen circles north here, he's in a good spot. There, the queen delaying back a little bit there, but she should be fine. Those wall segments are pretty small, so she should circle around. He's quickly climbing his percentage up. Yeah. I can't see much stopping him from no. getting the percentage here, but he's wow. still pushing all the way through and very likely to even push through the triple here. Let's go to hear it here as RC is still yet to be deployed with an in left here for Salino as he now sends the world champion to go in for the multi-target Inferno to help take that out. Just needs nine more percentage to lock it up as he's getting through. The queen did, is still up. She still has her ability. One ice goal and a handful of super barbarians left. RC got across there, getting stalled up a little bit there, but I mean, I, he's got the percentage yeah. here. Glass Champs is there taking the go! win here. The knocking drive gaming down to that lower bracket, and he's still moving here. He's still sitting on eight more Super Barbarians, more spell support. He starts to swarm to the very bottom there, getting that defensive key under control. Yeah, he got that key under control. He's got the head unders, and yeah, he's still pushing all the way through. He's just got to beat the clock. That is domination here. Clash Jams <laughs> barely off oh, of the perfect war on this match. Look at that. Clash Jams getting the victory. We still have one more tech to come in from Yo-Yo, but it's too far. They getting the victory. Unbelievable performance here. Clash Champs delivering, and they are celebrating to keep their upper bracket streak moving through. This is only the first match for them in the competition, but if you're going from the upper bracket, you don't have to play as many as the lower bracket teams. Yeah, it's crazy that all, I think, I said, Am I wrong to think that every single team has won so far has hit 14 stars? Wow. It has, right? Yeah. So that's, that's say that's an 80% three-star right there, which yeah. is mind-blowingly good. But I mean, to be able to do it not just anywhere, but on the stage here, under the pressure, under the lights, with everybody watching, like that's actually insane. But let's go over to Tribe Gaming. Let's see what this last attack looks like and see if they ever had a chance in the first place. Despite the defeat, I'm always interested to see this final plan, to see if they did have that opportunity, would this plan have been solid enough to be able to carry them to victory? So, Yo-Yo 23 making his way in with a super bowler smash. He's got the the Siege Barracks here, and he's gonna run the bowlers right into the core. I always like the bowler attacks against the anti-two-star bases with that Town Hall packed in the middle, kind of the ring-style bases. They can be a little bit difficult to punch, but once you get there with Super Bowlers, they can take some big punches into the core and do a lot of damage very, very quickly. But I like this setup here, just be able to reach a scatter shot as he works his way along the outside. Wall break over to the right, and that can be an entry point right over by the Monolith and Multi Inferno. Yeah, with that King and that Siege Barracks, with a free pack coming right out of it to move to the right side, gonna set that funnel as his Queen is now stepping in to take out the enemy Queen. The Super Bowlers are now coming in to help join in with the Warden, the Queen, and hopefully these healers can have help transfer off to him as the Jump Spell gives him access straight to the Town Hall. Now it's all about the Warden ability time. You wanna try to save it for as late as possible as the Town Hall explodes. Very, very quickly takes down the Monolith there with the bowl bounces and engages the ice golems. The ice golems are going to be anchoring him down here. Usually we like to attack from the clan castle side of the base there. So
so we can get the ice combs out of the way before we get to the core. And that way we can have the ward ability to get us through that town hall takedown. But we have to be delayed here for just a moment because we want to make sure the healers don't get pulled into that town hall poison too quickly. And so taking advantage of the super bowler's range can definitely give you the support that you need to get through that. But we see skeleton spell supporting the top side as the royal champion, the king, try to clear on the outside. Yeah, with this queen ability to help secure the defensive king on the bottom side. The royal champion's moving through the scatter up top with a skeleton spell providing a distraction near the scatter and the double expos. The healers are still alive on his queen. Very, very strong push here. Road Champion just holding on to her ability there. Still trying to get through all these ground skillies, but they just keep on popping on her. And there's the last freeze. I think he's got it under control. RC ability would be able to sweep out the rest of the defenses here. So it is too little, too late, yeah. unfortunately, for Drive Gaming. But they do hit that mark of a 60% hit rate and still climb to 13 stars. A stellar performance. And that would win a lot of wars here but it's not able to win this one because Clash Champs is going to take this win, put it out of reach before he ever had this attack go through. So there it is, triple on the board, and give it up for Clash Champs as they take this win in the upper bracket. Congratulations, Clash Champs. Moving forward in the upper bracket indeed, but Tribe Gaming will have another chance in the lower bracket. They are not out of it. It is a double elimination tournament here with a $300,000 first place prize, which will be given out on Sunday, today, tomorrow, and Sunday. Incredible. We have more matches, two more matches here today. I cannot wait to see what they will be. But let's go ahead and go to the stage with Itsu to interview with Clash Champs. Huge win here for Clash Champs. Congrats on that win. But you have played versus Stripe Gaming multiple times over the last couple of weeks. Do you think this gave you an advantage for this specific match? Uma super vitória, parabéns para vocês. É, vocês jogaram contra a Tribe nas últimas na última semana muitas vezes. Vocês acham que isso foi uma vantagem para vocês para essa para esse jogo? É, acho que sim, porque nós ganhamos o torneio em cima deles. E isso deu mais motivação para gente. I believe so because we won a tournament against them and that gave us more motivation. That is that that sounds really confident, but your voice tells it already, they are really known for the energetic experience on the stage, the energetic experience for all of the viewers. Were you happy with your performance on the energy level, or do you think you will even push it further with the next matches? Uh, a sua voz está até um pouco rouca. Uh, o nível de energia de vocês é altíssimo. Você acha, você está você feliz com o nível de energia que vocês tiveram, ou vocês vão é, levantar essa energia ainda mais da próxima vez? Aqui é Brasil, a gente vai mostrar o que é força, o que é motivação. Só que é Brasil, a gente vai arrasar, é força, é motivação. This is uh, Brazil, we're gonna smash it, uh, strength and motivation. That is really promising to hear, so I think we should go back to the casters and prepare for the next match. Thank you. Thank you, it's to there. Congrats again to Clash Champs advancing in the upper bracket. We are seeing so many amazing matches, but let's go and welcome Judo here to the desk. Man, what a match we had. Incredible. It yeah. seemed like luck wasn't on Tribe's side from the start with that 99%. But either way, you've got to give credit to yeah. Clash Champs. They came out, smashed those bases, and deserved the victory. Yeah, and even if they did get that time fail to convert, they still wouldn't have been able to pass the percentage there from Class Champs. But Class Champs is playing on a completely another level right there with their only miss. Four buildings off of a perfect war there. And doing that on a normal day there is like just normal for them. But doing that at that kind of level, this big stage here, that just shows you how prepared they came. You have to get so close to perfect wars to be taken down teams like this. If you can't do it, you're not going to be able to advance. You have to have the best days of the competition here in the World Championship, because one bad day could send you home. Absolutely. We've already seen the performances of the different teams. It's really close matches as well. It's just so hard to predict. And I think it's been testament that it's anybody's game. 
Yeah, absolutely. I think uh, a lot of people are going to have their brackets busted by the end of the day here about their predictions. But there's our MVP, Celino, of course, <laughs> of course, because he triples when it matters the most. And he did it all the way through the competition to get him here. And then he does it again on the stage here. But you got attacked. You want to look there, uh, Judo? Yeah, well, you saw Leo in second place there. That's the attack that I wanted to break down. The third triple, which really put things into Clash Champs' favor. So notice with the Super Minion Blimp, which we did see previously, he does use a couple of the balloons with the Warden here initially. If you're going to use the Grand Warden ability for the Battle Blimp moving through the base, you might as well get a bunch of value at the same time. And then when we do get to the Blimp portion, you can notice that he spreads the clones like we talked about, but continues to use the invisibility away from the Town Hall. So notice the Battle Blimp, you don't want to pop it next to the Town Hall, even though that's your primary target. You want to make sure that they are far enough away to reach all of the different defenses so that you can get that huge value. After that point, he's got the Archer. Doesn't send that in too early. Otherwise, the Super Minions might have been drawn across with the defending Super Minions. So a really smart player to hold back on that. And the other point is that you've then got this huge pathing to then move your heroes into the base. And it's just the case of using the Super Barbarians at that point to keep them in the center. But I think we are ready for the next match. So let's find out who it is. All right, well, let's... Our next match is ready. Our next two teams are ready. Please give it up for the first team, the winner of the China Golden Ticket Tournament, Team Super BLCX. through the championship qualifier. It is Early Attacks. about ready to get into the first matchup. Another very difficult one to predict here. <laughs> Early attacks really have a lot of momentum in the community tournaments, but rumor has it that Super BLTX has the base builder from JX Tiger back when they won the world championship. So I'm really looking forward to see whether that plays in their favor. Yeah, that's a very good point you're addressing there. Uh, but first of all, let's take a look at their offensive lineup. We have Seven, Manta, Meow, Wei, and Peng. And let's see if they can shoot away three stars at the bases over at Early Attacks' side. That's certainly what Wei is hoping to do, judging on those images. Very high hit rates as well, as we've seen across all of the players at this level. But let's take a look at their opponents in that of early attacks. Getting ready, all full of smiles at the <laughs> moment, making sure the pressure is not getting to them. I love those pictures. <laughs> so do oh. I. And we have Chihawa there at the left, he followed by Hiroya, who's showing off his biceps. Kuma, what's he doing? Climbing a wall, I think. <laughs> Yala is definitely coming in for a boxing match. And I think the last one was Nero. He's climbing his way up to lift that World Championship trophy on Sunday. Let's see if they can do it. The first attack is about to start.
And it's going to be Chi Hawa for early attacks. Coming in first, another time we see some super barbarians, but they are mixed up with the twin hawk strategy. But other than that, Judo, we notice right away some skelly spells and invisibility spells. So see what he's going to do there. He opens the blimp right away. Wants to try and get that multi-target Inferno, but more importantly, just get the Rage Tower down and out of the way here as well. Then we have... Oh my... Did he... What? Oh, he dropped the Invisibility rather than the Skeleton Spells, Maxi. Such a huge mistake here. Oh, yes. That I don't hurts. see how he can do anything at this point. Is he even going to get the Clan Castle? Maybe. I don't know. It's close. It's close. And it's... No! The Metal Builder heals it back up. He tried to go for it, and I think that was the right call, but unfortunately fell short, fall short, and that is definitely not how you want to start an attack, but now, in my opinion, it's all about securing that, the, the two-star. That's the most important thing now. It has to be. It is a team game, so he has to lock up the two stars, push the percentage as high as possible, so that his teammates can then get those three stars and hopefully bring them out to victory. He's got to just put this behind him, which he seemingly is at the moment. Setting that funnel at the top, King and Queen nicely now working their way towards that town hall with the golem protecting the queen. Yeah, but now I wonder if the king is going to be enough to take out that town hall as the CC is being lured, as the troops... Okay, the queen is coming back, so that might give him the edge to get this town hall down, but he doesn't have a poison. Remember, he wanted to take the clan castle out with the spells that he brought, the skelly and the rage and the invisibility. I feel like he might have had to freeze the clan castle troops behind the town hall, because now they're in front, his heroes are attacking them, he's trying to send the super barbarians in. Maybe it's just hog riders into the town hall at this point, because like you said, he has to get the two star. Yeah, but I feel like he is still going all in. Not even now he's sending the Royal Champion or anything directly. Rather, he tries to hit, hit the vulnerability so the Royal Champion is in it, which actually worked so far. Luckily, he didn't find any skeleton traps, but while well, the Hawks are doing work at the top side, we really need that Town Hall takedown now. But it seems like the Royal Champion will get it one more shot. Yes, so that should secure the two star if he's able to climb over the 50% threshold. Very well done, holding his nerve, making sure the Royal Champion could secure that Town Hall with the side swipe and allow the Hog Riders to drive the percentage, because the last thing you want to do is commit too much to the Town Hall and not get the 50%, let alone the high percentage. Like I mentioned, it is a team game. You can see his teammates giving him some praise there, just, you know, try not to worry about it. We got you 60%, at least he got that two star, but, Ah, oh, the other team going to be able to capitalize on that. What, what do you think? Are, are Super going uh, to be able to do this? I, uh, I do think so, um, because on average, all of these players can get more than 60% two star in a hit. So that definitely uh, sets his team off there and was uh, not great for their momentum, I bet. But I feel like at the he looked very calm, but he was shaking like internally um, because what he did there seemed like he was really, really nervous. In the end, I'm yeah. very happy that he was able to take the town all out because so far we have not seen any perfect war, you know? So with a 14 star war, you will still beat many, many teams around here. So they shouldn't really uh, stop now. They should still keep on fighting. But first, a defense would be nice. So let's see what Super can bring to the table in their first attack. Like, even though there was a big defense, the pressure's still on here in order to capitalize on that. It might even, because it's so different to the norm, be a little bit more pressure on him. And look at the amount of sneaky goblins wow. to attack Maxi. <laughs> That is a lot of sneaky goblins. He really wants to get that town hall, but other than that, maybe he wants to grab something else. Like, now he's got that out of the way. Now he can easily target the town hall already. Um, so that would be like seven, eight more sneaky goblins he needs, just six, so 12 more to go. Interested to see what he is going to do with that. But first of all, that town hall needs to fall, and it does. Fantastic job, done to perfection there as well. Just the right amount of Sneaky Goblins at each stage. And yeah, he's just using them to clear many of them high hit point defense, uh, high hit point storages rather. Sneaky Goblins on the defenses only happens after they do get all of the loot based buildings down. But now you see that's why. Very effectively get rid of those storages so the heroes don't get caught up and they follow the log launcher into this clan castle area. Yeah, that's exactly right. And we were talking about how 
Uh, Super is the big unknown to many mm. of those teams. Of course, we have uh, we have seen them a couple of times throughout the year, but especially they, their bases remain a huge secret. So she, we should take a look at that in the next attack as well, because you said it, they have a very well-known base builder who built for JX Tiger back in the day. And also in their qualifying stage, they used burned bases from the other team. So no one knew what they would come up with. But now let's concentrate on this attack, because also I feel like this is kind of out of the box with that many super barbs and super goblins. Yeah, and with that hero push, he's managed to simultaneously pop both rage spell towers. <laughs> that looks fantastic in the middle of the base. But it does mean once they go down, he's just making small pushes to the left and then the right, just adapting based on where his heroes go at this point. It's a really nice job to reinforce the RC side with the balloons. Meanwhile, the queen not quite getting in towards that single target inferno. Do you think that's going to be a problem towards the end here? Yeah, it might be, because now this queen is shooting away at a wall. Uh, However, he's sending in the... Uh, oh, he's already sent in all the Super Bavarians at the top side to try to tank for the Royal Champion. Now, he he's has to invest a freeze as well, so that means he's out of spells. And if that Royal Champion gets her to the range of the single Inferno, uh, she won't have a good time. So it definitely... I think it comes down to the Queen wrapping around this base and going into the single Inferno, which can take a lot of time, given that he only has 30 seconds left. That could be a problem. It certainly could be time ticking. He's got the Queen ability, but like you said, he's got to try and save that. Maybe he uses it through these initial oh, defenses no. to push through. She just retargeted, like she wanted to go outside of the wall. Okay, now she finally goes. Um, otherwise, if she would have gone for that uh, army camp in the in the mm. corner, it would have saved a couple of seconds. And to the seconds, it's what it's coming down now, Judo. Just going to fall short. Don't tell me it's another 99%. Oh, oh it's no. almost worse than the 98. <laughs> Obviously, it's not, but it just pains that little bit more. Super BLTX, obviously taking an early advantage, but not quite able to capitalize on that three star. Early attacks, still got a lot to do though, because they need to put that first attack behind them now. Yeah, but it's still, even though it was a 99% two star, so it's a very high two star, that gives early attacks a little bit of hope, because now they just need one defense and they could still win out of their own power with yeah. three starring the rest of the bases. So that would actually make so they could come back from this uh, upsetting first uh, yeah, big fail that they unfortunately had. So I think that will give them a little bit of motivation, but they have to you know, put that uh, also into an attack now. Absolutely, you'd always rather have the stars on the board because the stars are what determine the war. The percentage is great, but you need to have those stars. So you would always rather have the three stars. Can they get one themselves? Let's see what early attacks got. going to be none other than Yatta. And we know that he is one of the fan favorites. We could already hear the shouts from the viewers that are here in the arena in Helsinki. And Yatta is not coming in with the Super Bowlers that he is so known for, but rather with a Queen Charge recall and then the Super Dragons. Very interested to see how he plays this one. Typically on these styles of bases, notice he deployed the queen directly at 12 o'clock. You don't have to worry about committing funneling troops. You can just allow the queen to go whichever way she wants, to the left, to the right, and then you just flip the plan accordingly. Sending those Coco Loons in, getting some nice value as well. A brilliant use of the poison to get rid of the headhunters early. And then notice that one minion in his army composition when that Lava Hound pops. Yeah, great, uh, yeah, great prediction there from you. And uh, I think he wasn't sure if he was uh, going to uh, go out the CC, but he tried and he was able to. And that is a really nice value early on, extra value for the queen early on. But now he also knows that he has to be uh, quick in deploying those troops, and that's exactly what he does right away with the super dragons. Otherwise, time could be a problem. But now I think the biggest worry for him is the town hall take for now. Absolutely, you always want a good split on the dragons. Look, the use of the freeze spell there to the queen, but she doesn't go down. Ah, that could be a problem. Yeah, unfortunately, the air defense was not being tanked for by any other troops, so it was able to take out this super dragon. So th that will be the question if that early in that investment early on might be a problem later. Isn't the battle bit drilled down to the bottom? Fortunately, the super dragons up there. It's hard to say we're going to dodge the poison, and <laughs> one of them decided to go through. Battle drill still going through and popping the defenses, but 
really what he wanted with the Super Dragons is the core. Notice that Rage spell now, trying to just get any final defenses he can because his heroes cannot tackle that area. Yeah, that's exactly right. And unfortunately, the Queen went uh, back into this uh, enemy Queen compartment, but now uh, luckily she can wrap through due to the wall break uh, that the battle drill provided. So very nice to have that in the mix as well. And while the Town Hall takedown went uh, well for him, I feel like his troops are thinning out way too quickly there at the bottom of the base. And the Rage Up Multi Inferno even takes out the healer, so that means no extra value for the Queen. And that is not the three star that they needed. In fact, it's going to be another quite low uh, percentage two star here. Yeah, you've got to say this will be difficult for early attacks. Now, did all he could in the end with the Super Dragon splitting, but 66% two star with the 99 i know it wasn't a three but momentum wise how do you think it do you still get that confidence boost from a 99 as if it's a triple or i definitely think so especially if it's such a close attack like the one that we just saw like to to you know throughout all the attack you as a team you hope for the defense and then it, like when it comes down to the last seconds and it's either the three star or the defense and you get it you will like your whole team will cheer and it will definitely boost you but unfortunately it, it didn't help their uh, performance and they really need to increase the, the star and percent count that they get with their attacks to come back into this match. Yeah, maybe a little bit of nerves kicking in here with yeah. the because we know they are a solid team, but let's find out if Super BLTX can get the first three star of this war. is preparing and now dropping his first troops and interestingly we see another attack that is based on super barbarians and super goblins basically the same setup here um, but a little lalo included there nine balloons and a lava hound so it feels like they are really dissecting the base building by building and have a plan for every single compartment there is yeah, I really like this plan, using the sneaky goblins in towards the town halls. A little bit like what we've seen in, uh, uh, in back in 2021, I think this strategy was really popular. Sneaky yeah. goblins for the town hall, hero dive in one area. Let's see, he's got a lot of difficulty now getting this town hall. Only eight sneaky goblins left. He's tested for the area. Oh. The haste spell is gone. He might yeah. have to use two invisibility spells here. That's a little bit early as well. Oh. He had to use the second Ooh. early. Ooh. The mortar shot once. And talk, they still get it. It was wow. a multi mortar, so I think two shots might have killed the super goblins. So he did well in investing a little bit more there just to be sure with this extra invisibility spell uh, to lead them into the tunnel and then to take it out. But now that is done, and he is right away concentrating on the next part of the attack using the earthquake to first damage the defenses but also the walls so the lock launcher will open them even sooner. Fantastic value there. That's always the good thing about diving into these areas. But wait, look at his oh. heroes here, Max. The King's gone on the outside. Queen is fortunately still there. So alongside the Yetis, he doesn't have a rage. Oh, he did have a rage to use there. So will he be able to get the Eagle and push the Queen maybe even in towards the Monolith? Yeah, it's still looking okay as he has the Yetis tanking and the um, Rage of Unicorn healing the Queen. But definitely he would have wanted the uh, King and the tanking power of the uh, Electro Titan. And yeah, he pops the Queen ability right away. But the Giant Bomb kills her! So the tanking, the extra tanking would have been really nice. The question is, can he? was that enough value? Can he still come back from it? He's got the Skeleton spell and the RC ability alongside the two free spells. We've got to say, with three Expos still <laughs> up firing, the defending heroes, this is not going to be easy. And time is not on his side either. Has to use one of those free spells early, trying to save the Royal Champion ability for further into this backside of the base. Is he going to be able to get this? Still got one Valkyrie to try and reinforce as well once they move through. Oh, he's not freezing, I think. Oh, no. oh the freeze was late, but maybe he can still get the scatter shot. He got the Royal Champion out of the way, yes, Excellent. and the scatter, but this Rage Tower for now will stay up, and with just 20 seconds on the clock and more than 
the 17 building is to be exact, still to go, and uh, yeah, no more troops. This is not going to be the three star, so the score on stars is going to stay even between those teams, and it means we still have a match at hand, even though early attacks were not able to perform in their first two attacks. So the door is still open. Still anybody's game, and I hate to say it, but we have seen it time and time again, where the teams are cranking away the percentage. They get such a big lead, but then they don't capitalize on the stars. And I'll just stop the conversation there. <laughs> yeah. I don't want to jinx anything, <laughs> yeah, yeah, <no. laughs> but it's certainly a likelihood. Somebody has got to get that three star and really put the pressure on the other team, because right now it seems like they're both struggling. Yeah, absolutely. And what surprises me a little bit here is that Super is indeed coming in with a strategy that is not really expected. Yeah, mm, so it's yeah. something new. But they're not successful with it. You would think that they have practiced this a lot and know which bases to attack. But we have to wait and see how it goes for them in the next attacks. But for now, it's going to be early attacks next. of support from the audience here for both sides as well let's see what we can have the ice hounds in this one so an ice lalo attack let's see i always like to see where they use it but look at this two invisibility spells oh. for the battle drill to target the rage tower in the center <laughs> he's smiling i love this he knows that everyone will love this and it's working we've seen it before i think once but i don't even remember if it was heroia doing it what i do remember though is that he is the highest hit rate player in early attacks and there were some perfectly um, timed invisibility spells there to give the biggest possible value to the uh, super wizards and um, even though he didn't get the multi inferno i don't think he was intending to yeah the battle drill is blizzard taking out a huge chunk there at the start smiles all around but let's see whether he can get that three star electro titan will make short work of the lava hound once it pops so the pops are there notice the royal champion moving in from the top side of the base not messing around here so that she can move in towards the multi-target inferno compartment meanwhile the king and queen can move into this southern area and he's obviously just trying to then lalo through the town hall area at the back yeah and the thing is he can take out all the multi infernos most likely at least um, with this Royal Champion in there. And this one uh, uh, Multi-Inferno in the core, you can notice that it is not raged up, unlike the other Multi-Inferno. So um, that is uh, yeah, that is great value for the heroes, but uh, the Lalo has already started, and it's about to count all takedown now. The Warden ability used early, and this is looking like a smashing three-star from the highest hit rate player from early attacks. Early attacks, like we said, it does not matter about percentage. It is a team game, and he has came through smashing this base not only tripling maxi look oh. at the devastation <laughs> and over one minute left as well what a turnaround and super bltx despite being in the percentage lead have got to pick things up absolutely and what a plan as well we love to see that creativity from the players heroia delivered when it matters uh, early attacks but late three stars um anyways i think super might have to come up with something else than the attack strategy they have been using so far so it will be interesting to see if they switch it up a little bit for the next one Indeed, a huge round of applause for yeah. Heroia there because, like you said, very impressive. Always having something different. The teams, they understand who they're going up against. They build the bases to try and trap them. And then if you can think of something outside of the box, Nobody tested that battle. No. <laughs> He's good. <laughs> yeah, I, I bet you are right about that. And look at this once again, the way that these buildings are set up. And you, you, you have to be quite accurate to cover all of those defenses, but Heroia did it perfectly. And there were actually some traps in the building. And there we can see the team once more, <laughs> how happy they are, because they know they are still in this. Even though they didn't have the start, they probably wanted. So uh, they might feel very happy and Super might feel the pressure now. Yeah, I mean, they're in the lead, essentially. So let's find out whether Super BLTX can get a returning three star. One more deep breath. 
four pang before he takes on Chihuahua's face. And yeah, he didn't listen to me, obviously, but maybe he knows better than me. He's coming in once again with the Super Goblin, Super Barbarian strategy. And maybe you guys at home can come up with a name in the chat already uh, that we should give this strategy that I think has no name so far. It's the no-name Super Troop strategy so far. Yeah, I'm sure over in Darian's social corner, he'll be able to figure out exactly what that <laughs> is. Focusing back on this one, he's got to get the storages down, just about gets that one. So now you can see that one test Sneaky Goblin. Make sure to check the pathing to the town hall, but also that there's no traps. Then we send them all in alongside the invisibility, making sure obviously not to turn the town hall invisible because <laughs> that would be a disaster. Indeed it would be, and it seemed like this invis was even a little close, but it worked out <laughs> in the end. Now let's see how um, Peng can get into yeah the core of the base this time around, because we know that uh, all the players so far have tried to funnel the outside building with their super troops, but it didn't work all of the time. Now the queen can take out this expo from outside. And let's see if she steps out, uh, steps in into the multi after that. Yeah, I really like the approach here because we we've seen a similar strategy develop with the hog riders. So they're basically using the same entries, then lolloing in one side with the royal champion, using the heroes on the other side with the super barbarians. It seems. You can see that Lalo in from the right hand side, defending the royal champion getting to work on those, and he has to get in towards that scatter shot. The air sweeper proving troublesome. Yeah, and unfortunately, the queen lost her ability early on because she was not covered by the warden ability. But he reacts there very nicely with the invis to make sure that the queen can take out the monolith that could otherwise pose a, th pose a threat in uh, the end of the attack. The royal champion still has her ability and uh, two freezes in the back as well, but even two freezes might not be enough to get through that enemy king that is waiting at the 12 o'clock multi-inferno. Yeah, was he sending the Super Barbarians in at the top already? It seemed like they were just taking fire, whereas if he had been sending them in now, they'd also be protecting the Royal Champion, right? So maybe just sending things in a little bit too early here, but still, there's quite a lot of defenses left up. And despite a really nice approach, nice approaches don't win wars. You need the three stars, and right now, early attacks, they're in the lead, despite the lower percentage. They indeed are, because the Warden alone will not be able to finish this base. And that is quite interesting that they come in so confident with this strategy mm. three times in a row. And maybe that is what they thought would be the best counter to those diamond shaped bases that early attacks are running. But so far, it's not working out for them. And I, I uh, doubt that early attacks were testing yeah. and uh, predicting these exact entries. Exactly, and if the, if the remaining two players have already got their plans locked in for this strategy, even though it's seemingly not working, it's very hard to change it at this stage. They just have to power on and hope that they can get some three stars towards the end here. Yeah, that's exactly right. <laughs> and I, I have no idea what they what they will do. But I, I, you know, I'm sure this is not the only strategy that these players know. Of course, they are so versatile at this level, and we've seen versatility and different attack styles from Super BLTX in the past. Um, so now, really, the question is: Do they think that this attack strategy will still be the right choice, or do they switch it up? But before that, we are back in early attacks corner. Just pretend it's a legend attack. 30 seconds, yeah. scout, go in, you're good. Right? <laughs> <laughs> Let's find out if early attacks can get the three star. This would allow them to take huge control of this war. And are we starting with a skelly bat donut? Don't tell me we're going for the town hall again. <laughs> I don't think I can take the pressure myself. It, it would be a wonder if if, uh, if more than two teams uh, had prepared that for today. And yeah, no, not today. He is coming in for the clan castle and the multi. Okay, he made the multi invis the first time, but then he reacted with the second invisibility spell deployment. Now one more should give him the oh! very easy landing. I mean, he gets the expo, which is nice to have, but of course he wanted the multi. And on top of that, he activated the town hall, but not the rage spell tower. Yeah, you can see in that rage tower area as well, it's not even the multi itself, it's having to get through that to get to the other buildings that are then enraged. It's just so much extra time and damage that on defense they're able to do. With the hero dive moving into that portion now, 
will that multi prove to be the deciding factor? Oh, I thought the queen was even going to go to the outside for a second there, Maxi, <laughs> but just about nips in towards the eagle artillery. Yeah, thankfully, now the, uh, the question is, okay, no, the question is not if the queen can get the multi inferno because this is not the wall he's breaking. Rather, he wants to go into that nine o'clock compartment, but with the multi being so close, it will do constant damage on his troops, especially with the queen fighting the tornado trap, and the queen is dying slowly but surely. Can she step out of range of the multi in time? Oh, the unicorn just can't get her healed up fast enough. Oh. Yes, just about gets out of range with the two ice golems now protecting. She can clear this side. Oh, that's nice. <laughs> wow. the, the ice, first ice golem even popped and thus used its freeze ability, and that allows the queen to take out the enemy queen and the scatter shot. And that air defense, hugely important, obviously, for this Lalo. With that down, you can see everything now concentrating in towards the town hall. Rage Tower pops, but he's got the battle blimp on there with the town hall down. Can everything move around it? But at the moment, everything moving around the multi inferno. Unfortunately, yeah, that's exactly what is remaining standing and what he wanted to get with the Skelly Donut. Now, I think he just has to play according to his initial plan. Well, look at this queen still going, by the way, on the left side. Maybe she will fill the, finish the multi eventually. But yeah, as I said, he has to go in with this initial plan to the right side and hope that enough balloons can collapse onto this multi inferno in the end. And so far, I think it's looking good unless there's a huge red knife. He did what he could do, but on defense, we've mentioned the strength that Super BLTX have on defense. The red air bombs taking those down, but is it still enough? They can get the bomb tower. We've got the hour with the warden maxi. Everything cleaning up. Can they get the multi target inferno in the end? He's cheating. Let's <laughs> win a round of applause for early attacks because he held his nerve right until the end. And now they are in a commanding position despite that first attack. They surely are. Now they have 10 stars over six. So that means super is under super pressure now. They really need to get I that like three star. What you did say. <laughs> yeah, they, uh, they do not have a chance anymore if they get another two star unless their opponent get a one star that we don't want to think about at this point. So that means early attacks, uh, depending on the outcome of super's next attack, could go for a safe two star approach rather than maybe their initial three star plan. So so that will be something we have to keep our eyes peeled on. But for now, yeah, it's all about a Super's attack. And I think it's ready to go. So let's give it up for Super and maybe their comeback. Well, I've got to get this three star if they have any chance. We're going in with, I thought, I'm going to use a similar approach looking at the troop composition, but he swapped to the Battle Blimp for Skeleton Spells. We do have the Sneaky Goblins clearing all of the, those resource buildings, so clearly wanting to get in towards the Town Hall there with the approach they've been using. Yeah, that's right. So they're not switching it up for now, but we know that Wei is an incredible player. He has been the most valuable player at the 2019 World Championship, becoming a world champion with his team at the time, Nova Esports. So he is experienced and we know that he is one of the best players in the world. So let's see if he can make it work. The Invis is down, the Town Hall, even with the three Builder Huts, is taken out and now two minutes and 15 seconds to show us how strong this attack strategy might be. Impeccable timing there with the spells. Blacktop Blimp. Oh, the Yetis, though, they move up towards the defending king, so they're not going to get the multi target Inferno. And he committed a rage spell there as well. Super unfortunate, you have to say. Really nothing he could do about that. Yeah, that's right. It's, uh, I mean, the, the King's Reign, the King's platform was far away, so I don't think he could have really foreseen this or taken this too much into account. But anyways, we, we have to wait and see. The other attacks really um, didn't just fail because of a backend multi-inferno. So let's see maybe <laughs> that in general, this approach will look stronger in the hands of Wei. He's not using the Log Launcher, as you said. He switched it up, so instead he had to invest a jump spell that he now used into the core of the base. But cores of bases are scary because all of the damage comes from all of the sides, so it's the most clumped up damage you can have in a base. Indeed, managing to 
use the Warden ability with the Headhunter running through, does now get that Royal Champion, which means the attacking Royal Champion is clear on the right side to keep the Queen moving through the center. I am a little bit concerned of that Rage spell. You can just see it on defense back up. There it pops, and his King, despite having the Phoenix, there's nothing else around to help reinforce at the moment. He's still got enough to react. 50 seconds, I think, is the main factor here. Yeah, but on the other hand, this Rage spell, to, uh, spell will now run out. So once the Queen and the Royal Champion get into this area, it will not be there anymore. Hopefully, it runs out in just a second. But also, the King, with the help of the Phoenix, was brought back to life and did impeccable damage on the enemy Queen. So it will be easy for his Queen and Royal Champion to take her out. Good. And uh, Judah, what are we even talking about still? <laughs> this is a three-star with the Royal Champion ability in the bag. Way has done it! Congrats! Zero nerves! Did yeah. you see the camera at the bottom? He was just dialed in, knew exactly what he was doing all along. And what an exciting finish we're going to have to the end of this war. I feel like every single one of them today has come down to the wire and been anybody's game. But it's really nice to see that attack finally paying off for them. Maybe that's the momentum shift they needed to close out this war. Let's find out. We've still got <laughs> early attacks in the lead, essentially, with their dominating position. So they really have to counter defense before they can have that opportunity. That's right. But you know, the interesting thing is I just counted percentages. And uh, Super BLTX are still in the lead by far. So if early attacks were to two-star now, that means that Super BLTX could actually come back from this with a triple in their last attack. So let's find out what early attacks can do in their last attack. Super Barbarians. Just starting out with those as well. Finds a Tesla for the Flinger, making sure that he can distract the border there as well. He does have a Yeti, so presumably once he gets a little bit closer, he'll use the Yeti. Because we do have the Archer Queen down to the bottom here with the Super Barbarians funneling. Waiting on the healers a little bit longer, but obviously she's not under heavy fire, so all good so far. Yeah, and a uh, nice uh, patient job there with the Super Barbarians funneling. And also look at this, at the right side of the base, this area is so trapped against a Flame Flinger. But um, he's able to lure all of the Teslas and traps there with his initial troop deployment. Mora does get one fire off to the Flinger as the Yeti got in range, but I'm sure he's not too devastated. Look down with the healers though, has to now quickly send in balloons because he's hit two red air mines. Fortunately triggers another, but there certainly could be more down there. Let's keep our eyes closed, uh, eyes open, <laughs> looking at the area. Yeah, and definitely Niarum should not close his eyes, especially... Ooh, the Queen was low there for a second, and he finds so many traps. So this seems to be baited, but great job there with using the Queen ability. I don't know, if maybe it was, it was even forced, but her health was so low there for a second, but he was able to keep her alive. Pressing that King ability on the left side means that the Queen will redirect across to the right. But check this out. There's all of the other red air mines. She goes up to the Eagle. I don't think she's going to that town hall anytime soon, Maxi. No, it doesn't look like it. And he's... He, oh, the Invis was not perfectly deployed. And also, even even uh, with the Queen Jeez. surviving just a little bit longer, she won't... She will go back to the town hall, as I just was Ooh. about to say. <laughs> no, I wasn't expecting that, to be honest. It looked like she would stay in the core of the berries, but she just get it! No! But maybe Super Barbarian He's got to send those in, but they've got a long way to go. Their rage will be down by the time they get there. Oh. They do, fortunately, since it had a slither of health, get that down. Keeping calm. <laughs> Calmer than us. <laughs> Skeleton spells on the back side of the base. The Royal Champion has very little health, and there's not a lot of troops. It's really whether the Super Barbarians can collapse to that scatter shot. It gets one fire off. It gets the second. Oh, no. They have all fell. So it's not going to be the three star which I think, as you mentioned, means Super BLTX can take this. Yeah, that's absolutely true. And it was a little bit unfortunate that the Digi did not get a stun onto the Monolith. Rather, it went for the Skellies. So those were stunned, which doesn't help a lot. Uh, but yeah, we end with a 94.
Will it be 95? No. We will watch a minion shooting away at a uh, clan castle for just a little bit now, but we will stay at the 94% two star. And yeah, as I said before, if super, now three star, their last attack, they can actually still win this. Absolutely. They will be on 12 stars early attacks after this. Super BLTX on the nine, but you can see the percentage. Like you said, they are so far in the lead. However, in the current meta, having three stars on the board is always what you want. But hey, you'd always take the opportunity to get it. Three stars and you win the war. Sounds so easy. <laughs> yeah, sounds so easy, but I mean, sounds fair, right? You have to three star in the last attack. It's, it's nicer than if you have just to two star, for us at least, as viewers, yeah. uh, because we know that it all depends on their, the attacker showing their very best. And we can see the emotion here among the viewers. And guys, there's just great tension in this hall. So let's give it up before we have the last attack and show what we've got here in Helsinki in the arena. There we go. Let's get things fired up for this last attack and see who's going to win this because we've already got one lower bracket matchup decided, which will be happening after this. One team eliminated, but we will be finding out who else is going down to that lower bracket. Because remember, double elimination, the teams have to lose two before they're home. Let's find out what happens on this last attack. That's right, and we're already in with Seven coming in, and they are sticking to what they think is best. The Super Barbarians in combination with the Super Goblins once more. So let's take a look how deep this Town Hall is in the base. Yeah. But, but he, he realized that the storage just does, don't really cover the Town Hall when you send the Super Goblins right from 6 o'clock, and I love how quick he was there, you know? there are, uh, We saw a couple of uh, times where it took more than 45 seconds to take out the Town Hall. This time just 35. So I guess he won't have a big problem with time towards the end of the attack, but rather the push into the base. Yeah, and I love the flexibility around funneling for the heroes. In some attacks, they opt for the sneaky goblins. In this one, obviously, being defenses up there, opting for the super barbarians. So even though there's only a one-tile gap in the wall, the queen still redirected up and went in, which means right now, it's looking great. Everything's following that log launcher. You can get into the heart of the base. Then, depending on where the heroes go, send his royal champion in the lava. That's right, but the king is running in front a little bit as the queen is stuck on the lava hound and lava pups. Uh, so yeah, he misses the, or he cannot use the ward ability with the king and his barbarians. So now he uses it late, but the king is already was already brought back by the phoenix. So he, yeah, and we know that during the uh, reincarnation by the phoenix, he will not be brought back by uh, or be supported by the warden ability. But anyways, the Lalo is starting already with the royal champion. So much going on. I don't know how it's looking. What do you think, Judo? I think it's really tough to call right now, actually. The Earthquake spell was really good to help lower the, um, the hit points of the defenses in that area. I really had to call it. I would say he's probably going to be able to get it as long as he can swarm the monolith at the bottom. Keep the RC ability and the invisibility for the back end. And so far, the balloons are out in front of the queen. Besides, uh -huh. use the invis on the monolith. He's got the freezing skelly spell. I think he's good. I think yeah. he's good. What do you think? Yeah, it very much depends on a perfect skelly spell deployment for sure. I don't like that he doesn't have a headhunter though. Um, but there goes the skelly spell. Uh, Royal Champion is low on health, but now maybe freeze while the skelly spell is active. And it would be nice to get the rage tower in the freeze as well. Okay, he goes for the easy one. And I think at this point that was the better choice. And I think it's looking good for it's Seven. And good. he's already smiling and leaning back. And he is celebrating <laughs> because he's actually done it. Super get the victory! Clutching it out at the very end. Three stars needed. And they had back-to-back -back three stars at the end there as well. A little bit of nerves are shaken off now. They still get the victory and moving on to tomorrow's matches. They know what it feels like being on the big stage. And they know what it feels like to get a victory as well. I can't <laughs> wait to hear from them. But wow, what a tight match that was. Despite the lower stars, we still had the same tension and pressure in each of the attacks. For sure, especially because it was open until the very last attack, when the pressure was at its highest. Super 7 was still able to perform. Yeah, and, and like way as well. Both of these players showed us that the strategy they were preparing was actually very, very strong. So talking about them, let's hear from the players what they think about their victory.
An absolutely insane match here. And what a comeback right there. Or really avoiding the comeback from the other team. But we have uh, Wei here on the stage. And Wei, what were you thinking when Heroia tripled and they started to make the comeback and overtake you? Uh, I was very um, I believed in my teammates and in my strategy. And it worked. And speaking of your strategy, have, did you plan from the beginning to use this new attack with the sneaky goblins or did you just decide on the fly? Uh, this strategy we have been rehearsing for over one month, so we are very familiar with it. Very, very interesting, but I'm very curious if you think that strategy or your other attacks will be enough to take on Clash Champs in their next round. So how do you feel about that next match in the upper bracket against Clash Champs? Clash Champs. Well, we have uh, m more uh, other strategies to fight with, so... Well, I hope they're prepared here because they survive in this round here and they will face class champs as we continue on in the upper bracket. Very, very strong performance, but I'm passing it back up to you guys the desk. Making sure to keep us intrigued there. Even more secret strategies to see from them in the coming days, but we're welcoming Carbon yes. to the desk. A very close matchup, that one. Indeed, coming down to the final attack. You love to see it. The very first match, that is what indeed happened. This one here today as well. Cannot believe the attacks that we are seeing from these teams. 12 to 12, and it came down to the percentage victory here, Maxi. Yeah, great showing, and I love when it comes down to the last attack. And like, I really also like that they stayed with their attack strategy. Wei just said they have been rehearsing it for over a month, so they felt confident with it, but like after three fails, you could actually think that they would change it and be like, oh, okay, you know, let's just throw Electro Dragons on the base or whatnot, but they stuck to it. And maybe this, uh, the, the reason was also that they wanted to keep their other strategies that they might have been preparing um, a secret for their next opponent. Yeah, I think that's a very good point. Let's take a look at the MVP. I thought it might have been Wei, who was also MVP of the 2019 <laughs> World Championships, like you said, but seven indeed, getting 34% of the votes for that one. So the MVP of the first match, we still have plenty more to go before we are crowning a World <laughs> Championship winner. But there were a lot of attacks in that war, but only one from Super BLTX, or one strategy yeah. anyway. So I'm assuming that's yeah. what you're breaking down for us. Well, <laughs> the one I draw attack is going to be from early attacks. Oh. And the reason is going to be because of the battle drill, right? The battle drill is absolutely insane. So let's go and play it out here and look at the invisibility spells. Look at this invis because he drops the battle drill and it goes all the way here to this compartment. It's able then to be able to completely clear it. There's no other way to get it in. The invis takes out those buildings, so he's able to then be able to reach the scatter shot, reach the expo, and take out the royal champion right in this area. And he didn't drop any wall breakers. Yeah, the goblins were able to break through the wall eventually, but because no wall breakers, they stayed in that compartment. It was brilliant. But notice this. The Queen is going to be responsible for running through this section right down here. But then the Royal Champion, she is going to be placed to the top side. She's going to be placed up here, and she's going to run her way all the way from the top side through towards into this multi-target inferno. Taking that down is going to help set up a path through the base, and then he was able to allow the battle drills incredible value. I could not believe it again. We saw it long, uh, not too long ago, but bringing it here again, inv investing quite a bit of spells, but still, the value. Value. Insane attacks, cannot wait what more teams are going to bring, Maxi. 
Yeah, I agree. There are definitely different approaches that you can go uh, with, either using the same attack all over again or, uh, you know, preparing a strategy specifically for the base. In, the, uh, in this one, the first was stronger. But now let's give it over to Darian and see what he's got for us. Hey everyone at Clashfest, if you're here in Helsinki, Finland, let me hear you guys make some noise. If you're excited to be here, let me hear it. Oh, come on, you can do better than that. Let me hear some noise. Awesome. The environment here is absolutely electric as we're celebrating the Clash of Clans 2023 World Championships. And whether you're here in Finland or you're watching from home, make sure you log in to clashevents.supercell.com and you can cast your vote on who you think will win the next match and who will win the crown. If you guess correctly, there's some pretty cool in-game rewards from gold, elixir, magic items, and gems. And we're giving away cool merch every day from our social media posts. So make sure you comment using the hashtags ClashFest, Clash Worlds, and Clash Esports, and every day I'll pick one winner. So let's do the first winner of the day. I chose Jaden Tan with his really cool setup showing that he's watching from what I think is Indonesia with a cool log magic wand. We'll retweet his comment through the Clash Esports channel later today. So congratulations to Jaden Tan on winning this Clasharama Barbarian plushie. Over back to you guys. Very, very awesome here to see some giveaways and the energy here is through the roof but our next matchup coming up here is going to be the first elimination match of the day here so the tension's very very high and one of the teams today is not going to survive and this is this is a wild way to start off the first day we've had insane matches all the way through it too that's right close matches new strategies which we have seen today bases all different styles it was incredible to just witness but we have to say goodbye to one team already, and that's going to be, well, the loser of this next match. Absolutely. That's, uh, it's, it is what it is. It has to have one of the teams get eliminated today, but only one team can ultimately make it all the way through the bracket and get into that grand finals and take that trophy. But we can see the upper bracket is settled now as Navi and Rapato will play tomorrow, Super BLTX and Class Champs will play tomorrow, and that first matchup in the lower bracket is going to play today and it is going to be i guess strut versus vn or is yes. it yes yeah all right well uh, <laughs> all right so speaking of that match here <laughs> here is our predictions on it we all picked strut here so uh, <laughs> what what stood out about strut for you that you would pick them over uh, vn here i think overall over the year they've performed really well they just had like one specific weakness showcased in the base for uh, in the match versus reported with their bases and as long as vn esporting does not have the same style of bases prepared i think strat is going to have the upper hand so that's kind of like the, the one big question mark to me what style of base is vn going to lose very true i guess we'll see how it all plays out here because we're about to bring the teams out here and see what they've got let's see what carbon has for us down on stage it is time it is time for the first elimination match of the 2023 Clash of Clans World Championship. Let's go ahead and give it up for Strut and VN Esporting. when you're in the upper bracket is pretty extreme but when you don't have that safety net of a live remaining and you're playing down the lower brackets it's a whole nother story here so this is a very very important moment they want a chance to stay alive in this competition and have a chance to fight through that lower bracket and continue to increase their place in potentially all the way to the finish then they need to pull through here so see the teams making their final preparations here as we get this underway but we can see the hit rates of the players there very very high here across the board here for strut that's right they are incredibly well rounded and really really strong offense and defense as well typically they have showcased in the first match 
ring bases with a showcase that again versus VN Esporting. VN Esporting has used Diamond bases in their match versus Navi, and they have performed way better than I feel like most people would have expected from them. Yeah, a little bit lower on the hit rates here, but they're all within a star of each other on the average, so it could go either way here. And you only need to perform this one time, and you survive and prevent elimination. But yeah, this is this is about to get underway here. So, guys, let's get this first attack kicked off here, and let's start this first elimination match. The camera is flying in, the player is hopefully ready as we see Exo Danny going in and Strat is to complete different style of base. Diamond base as it is, with two spare towers close by and the Queen under a lot of firepower early on. Yeah, gonna keep the healers safe though. The healers are not taking any damage right there. Went right in the safe zone between multi infernal range and the air defense, but able to navigate that perfectly. The queen stays alive, does not go to ability. Blimp sails in and takes out the expo and multi are his target. Seems dope, but oh, yep, okay, he's got it. He's got it. Yeah, he's been trying to wander up and fight the clan castle troops right there, but they are able to get their primary targets. And now we're gonna see if we can keep this queen under control and save as she goes invisible and passes some of those clan castles away. That was close, but a clutch invisibility spell to keep her alive and on track. Now it's all about that down low and the invisibility spell behind, which we have not seen that often, I think, today. And he's got the wall break to go into the Town Hall car, but he does end up going to ability there as the Expo keeps hammering away there, but I'm not 100% convinced that this Queen is even going to go into the Town Hall compartment. He's got the minion working around the corner there, trying to get the funnel set down the line, but he may need to deploy extra troops over there to try to get the Queen to take the turn. Otherwise, he's going to have to find a different way to take the Town Hall down. So the moment of truth here, need to get the Queen to take the turn right now. Otherwise, maybe he can get her loop back later on. She is no. going to the left, though, and so that wall break into the Town Hall not doing him any favors here, and it's just wasted troop space there that he'll have to find another answer for very, very soon here. As the Lalo goes to the top of the base, though, Itsu, and so he's kind of taking a risk on the tile takedown right now. Oh, God, and that in the first attack, like, there's no reason to take the risk. Now we have the Infernal Beams from the tunnel on that Queen. The Royal Champ is coming in. The Trade Champ is there as well. Is the tunnel going down quick enough, though? Yeah, Rage is used on it. The Invisible Tower going to pop off right there, but it can't save that Town Hall takedown. And the Royal Champion, unfortunately, is going to be hit pretty hard there by that mob. The Queen lost all of her healers. She's looking to drop soon. Eagle Artillery defended up at the top of the base there with that multi inferno. So the balloons got shut down. So every step of the way, it was just a little bit off. He's not able to keep it alive here. He'll grab what he can on percentage and at least get a little bit higher. But it's going to be an opening miss here for VNE Sporting and an early opportunity for Strut to take the lead. That's right, really good defense from them. The Imus Tower has worked great just to force some extra spells, but the crucial thing, the Queen going the wrong direction. And after that, it was ambitious to start that early with the Lalo, but he had the Royal Champion. I just wonder what would have happened if there would have been skeleton traps. I think that could have really backfired quickly. It's going to be a low percentage two-star in the end. And Strat, they're up next, and with that defense, they could pull ahead early, but they need to do their attack first. Absolutely. I think the Yeti bomb would have cleared the ground skellies, though, that would have potentially been around the town hall. So he did put the road champion to the same path as where the Yetis went. So I think that she had a clear entry there to go in there and get the town hall down. But there was the replay of it. There's no traps there. All the traps were already triggered before that. A couple bombs were going off there, but. Yeah, that was it was almost there. You can see the frustration. You know, there's a lot of things that went wrong there. It happens, it's just part of the game here, and they just need to adapt and overcome. So now we gotta see what's gonna happen with this next one. I mean, that perfectly showcases that even the pros sometimes cannot expect where that queen is going. I mean, she just goes everywhere. But I think we should take a look at Strat's attack because they are up next. for Strut. He's been very, very impressive. Loves his Electro Titan attacks here. And one of the players that can definitely utilize this recall version of the pack here. One of the strongest ways to use this attack where we just charge the queen into the base there and get her to form the funnel to set up the Electro Titans for later on. Way, way more efficient and more powerful than using like Lightning and a Warden Walk 
to set it up there like a lot of people like to use, but obviously a lot more risk involved here as he goes right into danger. Barely not go to... Oh, just kidding. He does go to Queen Ability at the same time that he pops an invisibility. A little bit late on that, and he does clear the funnel there. He takes out the defense that he's looking for, and he can work with this, but down a Queen Ability could definitely cost him later on. That's right, but he's triggering that right tower, which is clutch for the later attack. As he's just adding another healer, because remember with the recall spell, with the unicorn down, you can make sure that you're adding another healer with the recall capacity. But okay, that, that scatter shot uh, dealt quite some damage. With the funnel set up, he's adding the warden, but the queen needs to collect some hit points really quick. All right, we got the funnel far. Uh, he got the funnel set all the way up to the far left there, so he should have his troops make their way forward. And it's always a little bit of uh, roll the dice whether your healers are going to get hit by anything in the core of the base here. But he's going to prevent that by using a blimp, so he does not have to pass the electro titans and the healers through the town hall. Avoid the poison. Smart way to play that, and a good way to fight these uh, anti two star ring bases. But he does land that blimp in, get his drop out, and a raid. It up, freeze the defensive CC, and looks like he's got the area under control here. And he never really has to go inside of the town hall compartment because he can reach everything from the outside. A couple troops do go in there, but he's got a good spread of the troops right now. But he can just start to wrap around here. And as long as he can get the support from the world champion to the backside, then he can pull out the triple here. But that back end is very, very difficult with the model and the Tesla farm right there. A lot of incoming damage ahead. That's right, but those Rage Up healers did incredible for him, keeping all of his troops alive. And now it's all about the interaction with the skeleton spell and that monolith with the queen. Oh no, the queen is getting targeted, and this might be bad news for him. Yeah, but he's not he's got no way to protect his road champion. She keeps on moving. The beast picks up a little bit of tanking. Ground scale is really, really bad time to find ground skellies right there. And maybe the giant can give the extra cover. The other ground skellies go north into the monolith. He's still got a lot of titans moving. He's still got the warden to get some damage output. And the titans will burn up the ground skellies up there. But the queen does go down. It's all down to the titans here, but he's losing out on time. Time is his biggest factor here, I think, with that storage down south and only an archer chip away at it. I don't think he has time to get through the walls and finish this. Oh no, it looks like his re repeat with the anti two star bases for Strut. And it looks like the first defense for VNE Sporting, but the percentage is way higher for Strut. It is, and that's going to help him out a lot here. That'll be a nice way to, to put them ahead and give them that little bit of advantage. But obviously, if they're able to get a star on the other side there above Strut, then that can make a big difference here. But we are effectively tied on stars, up on percentage for Strut, and so they're in a good spot here. Obviously, could be better, but it keeps the ward nice and tight here as we kick this off. But yeah, that uh, queen getting targeted by the monolith right there definitely worked against him. He needed the queen to survive a little bit longer. He had the skeleton spell that was tanking initially, but the skeleton spell just ran out right there before he could take it down. So if he could have just moved a little bit faster with the queen or delayed the skeleton spell just a little bit, then maybe there's a chance he could have pulled that through, but that's not the case here at Zoom. That's right, it was not the case indeed, and that's the first defense for VNE Sporting. But we have already said the percentage is in Strat's favor, but VNE Sporting, there we go next. Let's take a look at that. returning back-to-back -back appearance in the World Championships. He played in the team to place second place in last year's, no, excuse me, third place in last year's World Championship, and now playing on this VN Esporting roster, which uh, he said is a team of his friends here. So very, very important to be able to play with people that you're going to be able to click with better, with communicate better with. But the question is, can he get this to go through and give his team a way to make up for this percentage deficit? Diving in with a queen charge into Super Dragons. No recall use this one here. So the queen's just going to have to stay alive. And he does have a funnel to push her into the Town Hall compartment. He's got the support to get the king down. And he'll just need a freeze for that invisibility tower and a raid as he engages that Town Hall takedown. But yeah, look at this, he's got that invisibility. Is it timed right there? Yep, he's going in and he's got it under control here too. That's right, but that one left grab the Town Hall. Might spell danger for him. Flash the Queen Shot, just keep going for it. And he just has to get that back and then done. But with the Sweeper pointing into a completely different direction, he should be all right. 
and taking with that timing. The Mojave for a with the Drain Trap, perfectly placed against this Queen Charge. And this Queen has to handle a lot of damage now. And yeah, Achilles is taking some damage from Multi Inferno here, but that's splitting the beams here from the Multi Inferno to prevent some damage on the Dragons. But they're under ward ability, so that doesn't really help out the healers here. Halo is also potentially going to get hit by Red Arrow Bombs as it goes to the Town Hall. He's down to one now as the Queen steps in and will start to work on that model. And it looks like he will get it down here. This Queen somehow stayed alive, but not for much longer. A lot of is that sneaky goblins? There was a lot of goblins inside of that slammer. What was the original plan here? I'm trying, like, if that was filled with sneaky goblins, then maybe he was in, intended for that to take the talent down. I'm not sure what he was thinking right there. I mean, take a look at that. This Queen Charge was just so baited. All of the right fans as well, making sure that everything goes down. And now it's all about the back end. Can you still turn this around? Get that first three star. The Super Dragon going for the Eagle next. The Royal Champion is getting targeted by the Ground Expo and it's dropping lower and lower. And, and he still has the defensive Royal Champion right there that could easily stop that Royal Champion or tracks right there. Warden goes to Phoenix. This one is on live support. It is not going to go through. And it's, a not, it's another bunch of percentage left on the board on this one. So it is a very rough start here for VN Esport. But if our last match in the upper bracket was any testament of how a team can make a comeback, then there's always a chance here. But they need to get another defense here to make so that they can just get ahead on stars later on and not rely on a percentage win right now because they're heavily down on those buildings. That's right. Their percentage is not in their favor whatsoever. But it seems like that the strategy or like the defensive strategy switch from Strat is really playing in their favor because they have defended now twice with their diamond bases. And I feel like they're the first one who are really utilizing the invisibility um, spell tower behind that town hall really well. Because so far, those bases are not only defending, they're defending on really no percentage. Yeah, very, very interesting. And uh, we know that the Strut team has very, very good base builders. And that's been one of their strong suits all the way back when, before their rosters had some changes, when uh, Astwell on that team was able to win the World Championship in 2020. They were always known for their uh, base builders, and they have a lot of the same base building team now, and they're still able to utilize that. So very interesting uh, bases across the board here. But let's get into our next attack here, and let's see what the response looks like. Seems like Rukatoris is getting ready, and yes, indeed, he is the next attacker. And wait, did he just like learn a little bit from the attack of reported? Uh, yeah, different approach because he is not taking down the rage tower. He's like more that he is using the lightning for funneling, while reported has used the lightning for like for the back end. And even with the um, Yash tower on his healers early on, which is never something you want to see. Oh my goodness! Oh no! Rigo Torres loses the ward ability immediately at the start of the attack here. And there's obviously some inherent risk when you drop a warden walk and you're dropping into some high damage like that. You gotta have the freeze and the other spells on standby, and you gotta play him a little bit more conservative than that. But he does get the warden walk to connect to the hole that was created by the lightning, which is the alternate way to set it up there. The variation of that attack that we saw earlier with the recall. So now the question is, as he charges into an anti-two-star base, he does have the blimp, and he can secure the tile takedown with the blimp. And then the question is, can he just stay alive as he wraps around with no warden support to, so, I guess, uh, protect these troops here at critical points here? And that also means no warden ability to save the blimp and ensure it delivers to the town hall takedown. First, I think he needs to make sure that those Titans are staying on the outside. They have to go to the top side. Are they going for the spell tower, though? I yes, think they are going up. The ice Golem going in, but that is not the biggest problem. No, definitely not here. That blimp is sailing across here, not hitting any traps. It looks like it makes it all the way to the core. Yeah, it meets it with the rage right there, gets all the red air bombs cleared, and he does have the Yeti Bomb pop out and get the Town Hall down and gets the Clan Castle pull from the opposite side of the base there. And now, as long as the Clan Castle troops don't come up behind him, which they actually kind of are right now, the Ice Golem that leaked out on the left side, is going to cause these defensive CC troops to go in behind him and potentially take out his healer. So that could definitely be a complication here for Rigo Torres on top of the other problems that he's already had. Yeah, but I think since he had not to use the Warn ability for the Blimp, he was fine. Still looking all right, the Queen, though. Oh, oh she dies no. for ability! 
The super minion shots were already in the air, and that is just more problems for Rigo Torres here. It keeps on pushing into the defensive heroes, trying to get the percentage up here. This is a big defense, but looks at it for BNE sporting, but how high can Rigo Torres pull this back? As he just has a couple of small things to work with here, but there's a lot of base left. That's why everything's stacked together though, so maybe he can still make it through if, I mean, that needs to be a miracle, but the Royal Champion will at least one-shot some of those surrounding defenses. The King can still tank a little bit, so maybe that's uh, po possible? Yeah, maybe. The King has the Phoenix still. Ground skill is still on the Royal Champion. She's under fire from the Teslas here. He's got a couple of Barbarians, Archers, and Wizards swarm at the bottom. He's got a Hog down there, but you can already see that he doesn't believe he made it, and I think that is correct there. He is going to fall short here, just not by much. It's pretty close here, but it's not quite enough there. And just a couple of things went wrong in that attack there. He tried to hold it together, but again, and he still gets it all the way up to a 96%. So they're going to sustain their percentage advantage. But man, this feels like uh, deja vu after that last war there between uh, Super BLTX and early attacks. And so we're, we're seeing that again with the big lead here, but only on percentage. Yeah, but I feel like in the back of the, of the heads of the strop players has to be like last year, where they're Going in, kind of like as one of the favorites as well, but dropping out on the first day already. Is this going to happen again? Can they somehow recover? You see, all of the players are in the zone, really trying to concentrate on their attacks and trying to as well. I mean, that's always something really crucial, trying to cheer up your teammates, mm -hmm. which I feel like especially us should, uh, like, will do with the experience. But I think we're ready for the next attack, so let's dive in. When you need somebody to rally the team and get your head back in the game, who better than iPro? We have another Diamond Style base. It's Queen Charge, it's Hogs. He doesn't have the Twin Hog here. No Super Hogs, because he wanted the Super Wall Breakers and the Sneaky Goblins. Maybe we can get some funnel set with that. Maybe get into the base there a little bit easier. See this open corner at the very bottom of the base here is gonna prevent any chance at a wall break into that bottom corner. So the queen is not even an attempt to walk in that open corner. It pulls her off to the side, and then we'll push her into the archer tower. It could wall break the archer tower, and then again at the next inner Oh, well, oh, okay, queen, queen. All right, maybe he doesn't need that nice wall break here, but maybe he still wants to do it to get the queen out of that compartment and get her over to one of the scatter shots. But we'll see how he handles it here as he does get the Coca Loot to travel forward here, keeping the healers safe. No traps found. We better safe than sorry there as he takes that tunnel down. And now we're just going to see how he makes the transition over to one of the sides. Yeah, and he has to be careful. There's only two more Super Wall Breakers, so he really needs to wait which queen, like which side this queen picks. Is it going to be to the right, left, wherever? And we have the single Inferno Tower behind those Expos as well. So where's the queen going? She is going for the. Wait a second. Okay. Just like that, she should go for the white. Uh, it, it seems like it would have been fine if she went to either side, but he only has enough wall breakers to get through on the right side. So he wall breaks open the scatter shot department, and then he needs to get the next wall breaker, I guess, to open up access to the single inferno. He's also going to need to cut her off and force her in. So some big support here from that right side. Maybe the king? I'm not even sure how he controls this queen to go in there and stay safe from the single inferno right now, but maybe she could just walk away and avoid it and get out of the range, which seems to be the case right now. Yeah, he does have frozen up, which means he has to freeze that scatter and expo. I mean, at this point, that's one rage, one freeze left. And to me, Eric, that's a lot of base left. That is a lot of base here, but he goes for the next wall break, and that one is successful, so he can loop back around and go to the single inferno in a little bit. He's only sitting on one freeze, no queen ability, so, I mean, if he wants to invest the freeze there, I mean, it keeps, it keeps the queen alive potentially here, and she does get a lot of the higher damage defenses off of that right corner, and is able to make so that she can sustain here with the rage, but at this point, he's almost out of spells, and he's got ground skill. He's beating the queen right there, which is another complication, and he's just gonna let her go. He holds the freeze right there, probably the right call here because the healers are safe and they can go over and he can begin a road champion charge instead. That's right, the defending king at the top side is getting handled by that poison lizard. We have the hogs swarming that top side, but there is just so many spring traps. Now surprisingly we see the slammer of the jumper as well. So keep the queen 
Are the Roar Champion to be under control here, but the single Furnal looks onto her. She go okay. She barely even gets her shield off there as it goes full beam on her, throws the shield, and he's not gonna have what he needs to be able to pull off the triple in this one. And I mean, at this point, the percentage is so low that they just needed triples here. So as long as they get two stars, they're they're in the same spot, roughly. It doesn't really change the landscape of the war that much, but once again, it's gonna be up to Strut to be able to separate themselves on stars and take full advantage of this, as this one is not going through Grime Pro. I feel like every attack so far has not gone in their way with multiple times. They have like sneaky goblins inside their clan castle, inside their siege machines, but every single time the queen went for the tunnel, which was never really uh, what she was supposed to do. So things are just not going in their favor. But at the same time, Strat is not really capitalizing on the mistakes of the esporting just yet, except having that percentage lead. So now it's up to them to finally get the star lead, maybe. Yeah, well, I mean, Strat has been leaning on those Electric Titans to start here. We have seen in the past where they had leaned on the Electric Titans a lot there, and knowing that information, knowing that they can be a little bit predictable, maybe the bases are just prepared for VNE sporting, and they're able to hold them back here so far, but let's see if they can do it again as we go over the next attack. Attack indeed with Mask getting ready. We have another Queen. No, we have not another Queen Judge. We have another Titan attack. And it really seems like that they have, I don't know, take a lesson from Reported with what they're doing. In the last Ooh. Ooh. Oh, okay. <laughs> whenever, you, whenever you leave that Monolith alive uh -huh. with Bitter Hearts around, I am getting kind of scared. But he was able to manage this Monolith going down. And now the question is, can he set up the funnel? Because there's some Tesla. Yeah, Tesla's going to cost him time more than anything here, but he only deploys three of the healers here. Holds a couple on standby, so he can deploy them directly onto the Electric Titans. But one of the biggest advantages of using a Warden Walk here is the Warden will automatically follow 20 troop space or more. And so as soon as he starts to deploy other troops there, after he connects the Warden to the area that was removed by the Lightning, then the Warden will just naturally follow. And so there's not really a major risk on your funnel not being set here. And that way you can control the troops path into the base here. But let's try and quickly make their way forward here into the Clan Castle troops. It's Ice Golems, Rage Tower on defense, and he can pop the Ward ability if he wants to, to protect his blimp. But honestly, not really necessary right here as the blimp is going arrive to his target one way or another. There, even with the ice golems freezing it along the path. It looks like he's dropping out Yeti Bomb to take that town hall down, and it is successful. I really like that he delayed the Warner Blitz. He's seeing, okay, there is no black mines. I'm safe to go just using that Warner Blitz later on. And that's exactly what he did here. One Titan going to the middle. Is the Queen following? That's the question. Jeffer inside the middle of the base will be quite beneficial with the Warner Blitz. He's still not used right now as I'm saying that. Yeah, he's got some good protection right there. The Queen will be on the inside. The King is kind of slow on the outside. I feel like he would pop his King ability to get him to search forward a little bit quicker here and help get the defensive King down. But he just lets him coast along there. Not going to burn that ability just yet, and just burning freezes to support that defensive king takedown. But the healers are trying to figure out where they need to go right now. They go to the Titans, leave the queen a little bit surrounded there. She still has her ability. She'll pop it in just a moment. No, the healers switch back and give him a little bit more time. And so he takes advantage of that, and the queen moves into a more optimal position. Steps in and takes the Bolt Inferno down. Pops her ability to get the expo and scatter shot. Yes, indeed. And she's still alive and keeps on moving. This was looking really good here for Matt. This is looking like the first triple for Strat of this match, actually, with the defending Royal Champion going down. There's no key defenses left, and the Titans, the Barbarians, the heroes are just swarming the back end. What a great attack. What a really, really smart play with that Warden ability. Very, very nice. Just a delay there. No point in wasting resources if you are paying attention close enough and you can make sure that you only use it if you absolutely need it. And he was able to just hold it together there. And with the pressure on, he gets his team into a guaranteed lead as they pass it back over to VNE Sporting. And I mean, I guess we just got to see if they can get some triples because now if the pressure wasn't high for them already, now they need to not just overcome the stars, but they need to get the percentage as well. Well, which means they'll probably need stars to make up for it. Yeah, I feel like this has to be the highest percentage lead which we have seen over the entirety of this day. And remember, this is an elimination match. Whoever is going to lose this match is out of this competition and has no chance anymore for this first seed. 
Yeah, a very, very nervous position here for VN Esporting. And a lot of pressure on their last couple of attackers to be able to pull this war back and give them a chance because elimination is on the line here. And so you have to pull through on this one here. But let's get ready to send it off to our next attack here. And VN Esporting will fight for their life here. in with Lalo, some Dragon Riders, and it looks to be a Skeleton Donor to take down the Clan Castle early on. That's exactly what's happening. He's going for the Clan Castle, for the Expo, and for the Inferno Tower. No, not, yes, for the Inferno Tower as well. So three buildings right there. And so far, those are visibility spells. Oh boy, they're just perfect. That was absolutely perfect right there. And if you get the Sweeper out of as well, that'd be icing on the cake there, but the Rage activates, and the Multi Inferno quickly clears the Skellies out. So a good amount of value right there. You definitely work with that. Funnel formed with a couple of balloons, taking out the exterior buildings. The goblins being used to clear some collectors. A couple or one Tesla pop there, so we need to be mindful of more. When we see one Tesla, we often see a whole bunch of them in that area there. But he does go ahead and react. He gets a couple giants down and a wizard, and he's able to get under control. Did he also get the king under control? Uh, doesn't look like he's going to worry about that. But one of the biggest things that he needs to have happen here is the queen needs to reach the town hall with their ability intact. So she can pop her ability and take it down. So I'm a little bit concerned with the King standing right there with the model behind it. It's a very, very difficult position to get the Queen protected and she just goes invisible and gives herself a little bit more time. But she can pop her ability just a moment here. Well, she has a switch over the King. He should be good there. She locks on, pops her ability. Take it before switching, take it before switching. And Town Hall's down. And his entry is successful. I mean, this Royal Champion just getting so much value. Yes, the King went to the outside, but the Royal Champion is going to get that scatter, especially with the support of that Slammer. And now the Lado King has started the, the King has started at the bottom side. Eagle first. There's a sweeper left, but as soon as he's able to like get the warning that he's over that Rage Tower area, I think he's looking really good. Yeah, he's just got to get the defensive Royal Champion under control. Here comes a swarm of headhunters in from the bottom side. There we got four of them deployed directly into the Royal Champion while she's on the edge of the base. There's Slammer doing good work, ward ability is protecting a little bit, but not against the things that were, I mean, it was all the defenses that were getting protected weren't getting hit at that time, so they'll just use freezes to make up for it as it comes out of it. And there's a nice spot to freeze right there into the Multi-Inferno, and he'll just freeze it a couple times here, probably another time here to try to keep that alive. If he gets through that area and has enough troops survive, there is a chance he could pull through. That's right, see a couple of cleanup troops left, but that Slayer opening is going to unleash even more troops into the back end. What is in there? It is more loons, another Dragon Rider to push through this top side. Monolith being the biggest key defense to take care of at this point. The air defense at the top side has to be considered as well, though. Oh, and we have one of the best air defenses, air defenses troops in the game. <laughs> the King, even though he's already quite low on hit points. Yeah, maybe he can stop it up here because time is becoming a very critical factor. 30 seconds and not a lot of force moving right now. And the air defense still stands ahead, so he's probably going to lose at least one Dragon Rider. We got to see what the trap situation is up at the top of the base here because he runs into any black air bombs that could stop him up. There's one on the higher HP. Dragon Rider, he takes the other one down. And time ticking away here. And with the percentage deficit that they're holding right now, they needed a triple here because even with a high percentage attack, the chances to be able to take it on percentage in the end is very, very unlikely. So not the best situation here for VNE Sporting. They are very, very close to facing elimination right now. They need kind of a miracle right now to get this back. Yeah, I feel like, I mean, they're using ring bases, right? So there's just the chance of like some mess up, a good tornado trap, messing up a blimp, which uh, Strat has liked to use. So there are options, but it's not really in their hands anymore. At least that's how it feels like. Um, this attack, opening-wise, went perfectly. I feel like the warden ability was a little bit forced. It felt like it was only for this uh, Royal Champion and protecting the headhunters. I'm not really sure if there was anything else going on, but otherwise, the attack looked great. It's just not that enough in the end, but Strut is up next. Yeah, I mean, you had so many headhunters that he didn't really need to pop the word ability there. He could have done it a different way. But, I mean, it's all hindsight's 2020. But, guys, let's pass it back over to Strut. Let's see what they've got on the back half of this war. They 
are getting ready. They are in again. And Darkstar is the next player. Yes, quite a few of uh, different troops cooked up. There goes the blimp just right between those key defenses. It's going to be just a regular Super Wizard blimp. I love to see those because they're getting so rare nowadays. Ooh. Already getting quite a few defenses out. Wait, they're alive. They're alive. There was only one giant oh, bomb. There goes the small bomb. <laughs> but he has gotten most of the value. He did, he did. And he wouldn't be able to reach that multi inferno over the wall regardless. So, like, he got all the targets that he would have intended to go after. He got the clan castle partially pulled here. I'm seeing a couple of archers and I see uh, an ice golem, but I feel like there's going to be more ice golems in there that he just didn't get drawn out. That's the downside of dying to traps because then you don't come out of the invisibility and actually draw the rest of the clan castle troops out. You want those super wizards to stay alive until the invisibility wears off and then they linger for just a moment and get the full clan castle pull. So now he's just having to fight it while he's under fire of the defense as his heroes make their way forward here and try to set up this Lala. Using the regular wall breakers. Haven't seen those too often recently. It's always a bit tricky, especially for his multi front towers, but he is making that work with getting a lot of value with the zeros. The king still walking around this far left side. Yeah, the king was able to get the defensive world champion before he wandered off over it there because her the RC pad was touching the wall right there. And so now we see those ice golems popping out here. We knew they were coming, and here they are. Uh, tie up this queen here and prevent her from making it forward here. Can she get through the wall maybe and get the multi? No, she's going to get overwhelmed right there. There's way too much damage and he just has to rely on the Lalo to get the, the potential two-star lead here and just uh, really solidify this war. That's right, the trade trap in between two air defenses, which I'm quite surprised about because that one is easy triggered for Darkstar. Town Hall should go down shortly after, but the Warden ability is running out, so that a lot of loons are going down at the same time. There's yeah. quite a few loons left at the top side. Yeah, there was. There was a lot of them that just avoided the Town Hall, so the ones that went there were basically sacrificial. They weren't going to get much after that anyways. They're going to sit in the poison. They're going to go down. That's not a big deal here, but he's got the Road Champion still on standby for the backside, and because that defensive Road Champion was removed, she can move through here. The only thing you can really stall her up here is going to be ground skills, but that area is very, very dense. He's burned the freezes on it and taking advantage of that dense area and get maximal freeze value. There's ground skellies though. And it would be nice if he had some support right there from the Warden or the Electric Owl, but they're distracted by the King up top there in the storage. But RC is going to pop her ability and will hit that multi. Got to power through. The, like, he's really, really close right now, but I'm not 100% convinced that he has it yet. Oh, no. That multi have fire tower. Are there any more ground skeletons? There are some giant bombs. Oh, oh. Champion, no. Nope. No, he does not make it through. The Multi-Inferno stays standing, and that is the lifeline that VN Esporting needed. They still need a miracle. It's still a very, very high percentage, and Strut still controls this war, but it does give VN Esporting a chance at a comeback now. Yeah, and I'm surprised that, I mean, both teams did quite well in their upper bracket matches. But this match, I mean, we have not seen that many three stars from either of those teams, so maybe it's really the nerfs kicking in for those teams since. Quick reminder, we're in the elimination match. Whoever is going to lose this is dropping off this competition. So I would say there's quite a bit on the line. There is definitely a lot on the line here. So that's got to hold your nerve here for just a little bit longer here. Don't make any major mistakes if you're on strut side here, but you're going to have to get a triple if you are on the A and E sporting side here. So it all comes down to this final exchange. Let's get into VNE sporting's next attack. But it's going to be with a clone and probably a super minion blimp. That would be what I would expect here. Going for that rage tower area and making sure that he's able to take down quite a few defenses. Where exactly is this supposed to be landing? We have the blimp flying. There goes the sweeper, but he's landing early. But the super, the super minions are getting pushed back quite a bit. 
Yeah, they're okay though. He gets to Claude after he gets them back under control here. The invisibility is placed well, so he's able to cover them even though they moved a little bit, but he shifts that invisibility to make sure that the Monolith is not covered, and then they are able to target it and take it down. They get all the immediate threats out of the area there, and then they can keep on firing away. One more shot at the defensive Grand Warden. Takes him down, grabs out the Eagle Artillery. That was some really, really solid value here. He'll still have to fight the Clan Castle troops because he can't pull it all out there with the air troops, but there was any pulled there, they went up and uh, the heroes were able to fight it. I didn't see much though, so we'll see what he has moving forward here to meet as a resistance in, in the Town Hall area, but everything looking very, very good here so far. That's right, everything looks quite solid for this opening. We have the Queen taking out the defending Royal Champion as she's jumping over that wall. But wait a second, I think that Kim was supposed to take down the Expo, which the Super Barbarians have to do now with the Golemites charging in there as well. This screen is then all the way up to that town hall, or at least in the direction, because you see it's to funnel her in. Yeah, definitely gonna take a lot of extra damage there from that multi-inferno and the expo, especially there, just chipping away at his king there. Whittling down a slide pool. Baby Dragon down to the right hand corner. We'll start to work on the Wizard Tower. A couple Barbarians over there as well. And now he'll make his final approach to the Town Hall here. Burn Freeze. This Town Hall is already activated on percentage. And the Lava Pups here hold him up here. And that's what we were talking about earlier about getting the Clan Castle pulled. It's the downside of the Super Minion Bomb. So you don't get it here early to fight it off in safety. You have to fight it while you're under heavy fire. And he's got, luckily, that's the advantage of the Super Minion Bomb though, is you get a lot of extra spells there to be able to support to actually take that area down and give what you need to overcome the significantly less value that the super minions can get compared to super archers. But so far, he's still meeting some heavy resistance to his backside. He's got a queen ability, lost his road champion already. He's kind of in a rough spot here at Zoom. Yes, that's right. There goes another freeze, but his heroes are down by now. The Super Barbarians are not going to make that big of a difference. And this is going to be another defense. Strat's defenses were incredible over this match. And this is, well, overall, only 10 stars. Yeah, it's a very, very defensive war here for Strat. And we talked about it at the start there. They've been known for their base building for ages. The team does not just win it on offense. You have a whole team behind them that is helping them prepare and build bases and the very, very important decisions for the bases they decide to run against being supported ultimately pay off in this one here as they hold them to a complete defensive shutout here. And that is very likely elimination here unless something just absolutely horrible goes around with this next attack here. But then you never know because they have been running a lot of anti-two-star bases, and so anything could still happen here. And this is still up for grabs, just a little bit unlikely that they are able to pull through. And especially now the question is, do they maybe change up the plan? Because then you just need to go for a safe attack in general. And I think Super Dragons have done the job quite well um, in the past for a lot of teams. Are they going to change anything? Are they going to stick with their strategy? That is for sure the big question with like, going into the next attack. But since we're kind of like waiting a little bit, I think I would like to give a quick shout as well to Sir Iron because we talked about the bases and he's one of those key base builders. But with that being said, let's dive into the attack. the team captain asked a former world champion himself when he was on alternate attacks in 2020. It'll be his job to make sure this anti two-star base does not trip him up and he's able to lock in the wind here. Just need to play it safe here. Don't take any major risks. A lot of lightning being used on the opposite side of the town hall. So that doesn't really help the town hall takedown directly here unless he's gonna be breaking his way off to the right here. But either way, no matter how you play it, these bases are always just having an inherent risk because if anything goes wrong, you miss the funnel and a lot of troops veer off, especially with the fact that he used the Flame Flinger nice and early. That means he is not gonna have a backup of a different seat machine to go in there and take the tunnel down. So this is always making me a little bit nervous here, but we'll see if he can hold it together for just a little bit longer and keep his team alive in his lower bracket. It's make sure that all of those troops are going towards their town on the final setup perfectly so far. The loons are going in, triggering possible air traps to keep those healers safe. The king is going already into the right direction, but the troops have to follow. The town has to go down. But there's a second range tower ready to like go off. Got the defensive CC coming out right now, but he steps his way in. Just need to secure the 
Town Hall takedown. He's got it. He's got it under control right there. He does get the funnel perfect into the core of the base there. And there's 50%. Strut takes down VNE Sporting in this lower bracket, and they're going to survive into day two. And unfortunately, VNE Sporting will be the first team out of the competition. And a very unfortunate uh, scenario for them. But the defenses for Strut were way too strong for them to handle. And this one, this one's not done yet in two. It is not indeed. With Queen, with the Royal Champion alive, and with their abilities, and with another Titan and a Yeti reinforcing those outside buildings or like the troops, this is looking like another three star for Strat. As the team captain getting his team into the next round. And that is going to be another match then the lower bracket tomorrow. But for this one, they stayed alive. They did not drop out first. And I think that is looking like an incredible three star right here. Yeah, absolutely. Definitely a moment of uh, relief right there as he finishes the base off, locks in the win, and just as it was styled there, get a team all the way up to 12 stars right there. But there we go, our winner is official. Starat locks it in. Congratulations, guys. That was a, that was a trudge down here in the lower bracket, but they hold strong to the end, and in the end, they're able to stay alive and play another day. That's right, stay alive. That was everything for those two teams. Make sure that you're staying in this competition because there's always this lower bracket run miracle possible, which yeah. I feel like happens quite often. So never underestimate that power of teams who are dropping down early and still coming back and back. And especially as a team like Strat, if you're in the higher bracket, I think you don't want to get matched versus this team. But let's hear from them a little bit better. Let's go to the stage. Fantastic job. A little bit of a nervous start. Could have gone anybody's way, but you managed to clutch it up, get those three stars. What was it about the Electro Titans in this war that you felt a lot more com uh, comfortable with? Yeah, I think it's just the shape of the bases being all open. They can just walk around the base, getting the town hall with the blimp, usually fits that kind of bases, so that's why we use them. Absolutely, and we have seen teams go down to the lower bracket and win the whole thing. Obviously, it's not nice going down to the lower bracket, but you showed domination in that match, really, coming to the end of it. So how are you feeling moving into tomorrow? Uh, pretty good. It's uh, often for us that we have a little bit of slow, slow start in tournaments, so I think we'll pick up the pace from there. Absolutely, and you closed out in style as well with a three-star yourself. Nice little celebration, but maybe we'll see even more of that tomorrow? Yeah, surely. I think we're a bit upset about the first match, so that's why there's not so much cheering going on, but uh, tomorrow I'll promise some more. Well, I always like watching you guys attack, so best of luck, and give it up, everybody, for your winners, Strut! Brilliant stuff there from Strut, just staying alive here. And that means that day one is just about wrapped up here. That is a very, very nice way to be able to end it right there because Strut survives. We see our first team walk away here and that upper bracket is all set up with some very, very big matchups right there. But there's our final look at Strut. We see 12 stars, a lot of high percentages right there. Even when they're missing, they're getting really, really high percentage. They honestly, weren't that far off from a perfect war. Yeah, and I feel like what is especially impressive on this big stage is the defense. I mean, I always like to take a look at the defensive side as well, because those teams are incredible at Clash of Clans, and being able to defend them that well, even to like 10 stars, that is not easy whatsoever. So the base bidding crew, and obviously like the team who is doing all of the decisions, like what bases should we use and so on, has done an incredible job at the players on stage convert that into a really good win to keep them alive in this tournament. Absolutely, and Matt, or excuse me, <laughs> Ast was able to pull off the MVP status right there, and that makes sense there when you're able to get the, the triple at the end of the war there, and just make sure that even against an anti two-star base, you're able to play a safe there. They had good plans all the way through, and those anti two-star bases can be a bit tough there, but they, they seem to handle it pretty well there, and I think that they can handle it again. We've seen them do it in the past, and they do very, very well there with that Electro Titan smash, but there is our look at the bracket moving forward. It looks like on the upper bracket, Navi setting up to play against Rapata Gaming, Super, BLTX against Class Champs, and Strut is gonna wait for an opponent there, and we also 
We still have down in that lower bracket, Tribe Gaming and Early Attacks. A very unexpected matchup right there in that lower bracket. A very big matchup to kick off for tomorrow. That's right. But let's take a look at the predictions quickly. How did we do over the day? Because I think we had some ups and downs overall. Let's take a look. So Navi, we all did that quite well. Then match two, Carbon and me did that well. Well, okay. Maxi, like as Woody has done, really phenomenal with the third match. And then we had, uh, I think overall, out of the five matches, four times the red team has won. Is that like an interesting trend you, you might think has an impact on the teams? <laughs> I mean, it just goes to show you that anybody can take it. It doesn't matter uh, how your preconceived uh, notions might think where one team is better than the other. Anybody's game here in this World Championship. And you do see some uh, familiar names there rising to the top, but you see a lot of big names down in that lower bracket right now. They'll be uh, trying to fight for survival down there, and the competition is just warming up here on day one of this World Championship. That's right, and I mean, it cannot get any better than that. But I think we have uh, a lot of highlights of this day, which I think we should take a look at, and I think Judo will run you through that. Everything is only going to intensify from here. Each match brings more nerves, greater competition, but better rewards to become the Clash of Clans 2023 World Champions. One team is already out. No one is safe, which means predictions are incredibly difficult. How is everyone's predictions going? Hopefully better than mine. <laughs> Be sure to put your predictions in on clashevents.supercell.com where you can win in-game rewards such as gems and a book of heroes. Tomorrow, three further teams will be eliminated and the teams already in the lower bracket only have one more lifeline. Any secret strategies will have to be revealed. I still remember last year, we had lots of strategies, so I'm sure we will have many of the teams with tricks up their sleeve. But I am joined on the stage with my fellow co-casters. Carbon, how do you feel that went today? Oh, it was amazing. What a first day we have here. Tomorrow's gonna even be better. So many amazing matches. Itsu, which one are you looking forward to the most? I mean, that's really hard to pick, but I feel like Reported versus the fan favorites Navi, that has to be a banger. I'm really looking forward to that. Well, tomorrow we go down to the lower bracket with our first matchup between Tribe Gaming and Early Attacks. And that one is sure to be a crazy, crazy match here, but this is their last chance to reinforce any defenses and find any new attacks that they need to break out and make those final plans to maybe take that win and survive. That's right. And on the other hand, we have the upper bracket, which is a very comfortable place to be in right now. And we still have four teams in there, and they're all trying to get an unbeaten run into the final match. And if day one is an example of what we can expect for the entire weekend, the rest of the weekend is going to be epic with some of the world's best clashing. And for those of you watching at home, or if you're here in the audience, as Jito said, make sure you use clashevents.supercell.com, predict the winners of each match, and who's going to take home the crown, and don't miss our social media giveaways. It's been amazing to cast this incredible event, only day one as well, in front of all of these beautiful people, this amazing venue, and obviously my brilliant co-casters. So thank you, Darian, Eric, Maxi, Itsu, and obviously yourself, Carbon. Yes, thank you, Judo. You definitely haven't lost your touch coming back. It's been an amazing day. Remember, five more matches to come tomorrow. Thank you all so much for tuning in. It's been an incredible first day of the 2023 Clash of Clans World Championship. Be sure to tune in tomorrow at 8 a.m. UTC, and we'll see you then. Till then, Clash on.